boys in. I got Lloyd. We got J Mitch. We got Jackie boys. He tried to jump up and he might have knocked it in. Good time. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. I'm a liar. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Lafayette. My boys would come in and say, oh, my <laughs> oh, God. So I'm me and Joe on the ground. I got Joe in the headlock. And he's sitting there. <laughs> Helmet. He's, he's punching me in the stomach. Like, steady punching me, punching me, punching me. Here. There's everyone sitting around. Who here thinks Ochinko can practice today after having five full beers? He goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad's been with the team. <laughs> Six for, minutes. For seven minutes, right? <laughs> Chad's like, no, nah, man. I, I don't think Ochinko can practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I fucking saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. Be on the spirit plane had some issues, I think. She was sleep, sleep farting. You heard her or you just thought it was her? I, I sat right next to her. So. Whoa. What was that? Time to finish the show. Oh, that one is so Why would I have that? Oh, but... I thought you had in a circus or something. What was that? 6.3, I'm late. Like, I don't even know what I'd be doing. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you do go to spring training, are you gonna bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> My dad tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC is God. They hate fat people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? And it's like, come on, man. Hey, it is, it just the South, bro. You got a bunch of food down here. Yeah, like they, they they're just, all they're fatter just, than them. <laughs> <laughs> Players, look at. Lloyd. <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> uh, you're looking for a recruiting coordinator, Coach. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. We're wearing, <laughs> no way. We're wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome back to Mic'd Up. Today's Wednesday, February 15th. I hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day last night. Uh, we've had this we had this discussion a little bit off air. I don't believe in Valentine's Day like everybody else believes in Valentine's Day because Valentine's Day seems like it's something that if you're in a relationship that you should be doing on a regular basis. Going out to dinner, you know, drinking some wine together, having conversation, making it about the other person. I feel like that's that's a normal part of a relationship. Um, you know, maybe you do some weird things on Valentine's Day. Maybe that makes it worth it. I don't know. But a lot of chocolate, you know, yeah, maybe chocolate, chocolate everywhere. Who knows? But I, uh, you know, hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day. We had a great Valentine's Day. It's very low key. We stay at the house. Um, Lloyd, I know your your significant other is not here. No, but we're in the same vein of you. I feel like it's a holiday yeah. for people where if you're in a rut with your relationship, you really have to go out on Valentine's Day if you're very secure in what you're doing. It's just another day. I agree. Jay, you feel the same way? No, Valentine's Day is great, man. I, I know I'm a... I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're not... If, and I don't mean that in a bad well, way, man. Yeah, like, look, it's just, you know... It's just you give the significant other, yeah. your partner, something that they should get it, all it, the time. To me, so. it fe yeah, exactly. It feels like you, you're asking to, you know basically kind of give some, I guess, love and attention that no doubt. that you don't give every day. Well, sounds like, doing? sounds like you shouldn't, you're doing a little something wrong. I agree. So I agree. Got a huge show today for you. Jordan Thompson, LSU starting shortstop. Jordan Thompson is coming in studio at 615. He uh, is probably on his way. I would imagine they finished practice. He said he's coming here. At some point when I get a text, we're going to need somebody to go get him out of the you know, be that man. Yep, you maybe have to be that man. I appreciate that. We are two days away from the opening from opening day at LSU. Friday, we are all going. Well, Lloyd is not going on Saturday. He's got a prior engagement that he forgot about. He no, I was there. I was not told about. Yeah, That's two different things. That yeah, apparently, you know. Yeah. Cut. I went to the what is it? The engagement, not the dinner, but like whenever people you go intermingle and have like a party. Engagement party. And that usually closer to the. Ceremony though, not really. Okay, yeah. So I went to that, and then I got ghosted on the invitation, and then 
Mm. Yes, no, Sunday was like, oh, are you coming in this weekend? I was like, so your girlfriend got the invitation and then she had the plus one or did you all both get the invitation? No, I'm the plus one, but it's very obvious that I'm the plus one. So it's on her. I have no problem blaming her. Okay, well, two days away from opening day. Friday is the first game of the season. Saturday, me and Jared will be at the game. Yeah. That is, uh, I think the weather will be a little bit better on the Saturday during the day than the Friday night game. I would love to be there, but I will be watching it on TV. The, beauty, the beautiful thing about SEC baseball now is SEC or ESPN Plus covers all the games, so you're able to watch everything as long as you have ESPN Plus app. And uh, fortunately for me, I do have that, so I'll be watching it. Derek Carr is a free agent. He decided that he did not want to get traded. We talked about this smart move by him. Um, better for the teams. They don't have to trade anything. They had to restructure the deal anyway. Cam Jordan is putting the full court press on Derek Carr to be a Saint. He's already putting Derek Carr in Saints uniform. He's tweeting at him. He's doing these life types of things. I don't think that we have to worry about Cam Jordan going anywhere else. I think this is where he's going to be for the rest of his career, which I would appreciate because I think he's having a, dare I say it, Hall of Fame career. Borderline, especially I mean, in football. Yeah, I think that I think that he's the guy that you look at at the end of his career and you look at his numbers and you're like, whoa. Like this guy's definitely a Hall of Famer. We just didn't give him enough credit as it was happening. I know I know one stadium his jersey will probably be hung in. Or oh, no definitely doubt. his jersey will be hung in. So. In the Superdome. Yeah, 100%. Of course. 100%. Uh, but he's making a book, big push for Derek Carr. You know, the free agent market is out there. There's some rumors that Baker Mayfield may be on the market to go to New Orleans. I know Jared is not very thrilled with that. Hopefully that does not happen. Hopefully we get Derek Carr and that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. And that, I'm out. No, I'm out. He said one word answer whenever we sent that to the group text, like, I'm out. If I'm that out. happens. Not that's not two happen. words. Not happening. Yeah, one, one answer. Yeah, two one words. answer. Yeah, one answer. One answer. Good. One answer. Um, well those, documented. Yes, it is well documented. And if he comes here, then we'll talk a lot about that. I'll have a lot of conversation. LSU basketball is this close to getting off the schneid last night. They've lost, uh, I think is that their, their 12th straight or 13th straight. Maybe that was their 13th straight game they've lost. They played Georgia. Georgia is a team that's actually been playing pretty good basketball. LSU is in it at the end, lost by a point. Moral victories aren't fun to talk about, but they, it seems like they are starting to get better. Some of the freshmen are starting to play a lot more and have a lot more time and get better. Like I said, this year is just you have to chalk this up as a development. Hopefully, they can start, they can win a few to end the season, and then you can kind of go into the tournament if they even make the tournament. Does everybody make the tournament? No. In basketball? No. No, that's what the whole selection Sunday is for. There's like a bubble watch, first no, four no, no, in, no, no, first no. four out. Uh, SEC, SEC tournament. tournament. The SEC, the conference tournament. Obviously, that, I, I know, know everybody doesn't make the end. I, I was concerned for no, you for a second. SEC tournament. I don't know. What's I it like so. in baseball? What's the rules for that? Everybody but two teams, I think, in baseball make it now. I think you it's the same in basketball, honestly. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Too. So they have some work to do. They have to win a few games, maybe. Even, I don't even think they have a chance to make it. What's but their record in conference? We'll have one win. So I don't know. Yes. You might be on the outside looking in. On the yeah. bubble. Yeah, on the bubble of the SC tournament. Uh, LSU women's basketball coming off their first loss of the season at South Carolina. Sunday, before the big game, they, uh, you know, it was a tough one. I think they got, I don't want to say humbled, but I think they, they saw the measuring stick is. They are back on the court in the PMAC on Thursday. It is the Wear Pink game and does breast cancer awareness game. Um, it's a game that I think everybody should go out there and show their support, not only for LSU women's basketball, but for breast cancer awareness. Breast cancer awareness is, is, uh, holds a close place in my heart. My mom had breast cancer when I was a sophomore in college. She beat it, she got through it, but Still, it was something that I, it, it means a lot. I know there's a lot of people that struggle with those same things. So they are, uh, it's breast cancer awareness game. I think it is for um, Coach Starkey has a foundation that is, uh, that supports breast cancer. I don't know the exact name of it. I will get it and I will, I will we'll post about it. Um, but it should be, they should have a big crowd. Obviously it's first game after their first loss. You like to see them go out there, take care of business, you know, get back in the winning the winning column and uh, go from there. So some football news, NFL football news. Chiefs head coach Eric Bieniemy is interviewing for the Commanders' offensive coordinator job, which I think is a good move for him. Get out from under the wing of um, Andy Reid. Go kind of go out there and show that it's not just Andy Reid that you kind of learned a lot. I think that's his next step to becoming a head coach. I know there's been a lot of talks about how he's not been a head coach of all the offense. I think they think that it's more Andy Reid than Eric Bieniemy. Now this is an opportunity to show that it's not just. Eric, I mean, uh, How do you Andy feel Reed. about that? What? How do you feel about that? The thought that that would have to be his route to this situation. Um, 
I don't know. I think that I understand it in a way, but then I look at some other people that come from Shanahan, like Kyle Shanahan's system, and all like they know that that's Kyle Han Shanahan's system. So why are all these Same guys? Same thing with Sean McVay. Yeah, right. Like why are these all all these guys getting to get these opportunities, head coaching jobs from a tree that is their the other person's system? Yeah. I don't know. Now the, there may be some other issues. I know some there's there's narratives all over yeah, the place yeah, yeah. on why that's the yeah. issue. Um, but you know, I mean, it's just crazy to me that a guy that has gotten rave reviews from that head coach that he's coached under, who has obviously kept him there, who has obviously had him there and has been very, very supportive of him, and obviously very trustworthy in what he and does. the players seem to like him a lot. And the players like him, and that team has done nothing but flourish yeah. with those two there. It's still so ah, yeah. almost taboo. And, so and I think part of it is maybe they need to go out there and see them without having – Mahomes and having everything now because you know as you see some guys come from the other systems they didn't really have you know that MVP quarterback you know obviously McVay had Jared Goff and Jared Goff was good for that one year when they went to the Super Bowl but he wasn't nobody that by any means an MVP uh, caliber quarterback yeah but then you also had McConnell I'm not McConnell but um Detroit what's his name but, uh, quarterback. why am I Jared Goff no, quarterback. The one they swapped. Oh, Stafford. Stafford. But then you get Stafford there and has an unbelievable year. Right. And obviously everyone thought Stafford's talent was crazy high. And then the very next year, under Sean yeah. McVay's system, right. this guy bounces. Right, yeah. So It's crazy look, to see how it yeah, goes. I don't, know the, I don't know what the rhyme or reason is to that. Neither. Um, I'm hoping, you know, Biennium is a Louisiana guy. Mm -hmm. He's from here. He's from New Orleans, I believe, right? I th there, yeah, I think so. Um, and so I would like to see him obviously go out there and succeed and – you know, like everybody's got a pass. I know people talk about his pass, pass, but everybody's got something back there if you look far enough that you can say, oh, you know, this guy, whatever, whatever. So hopefully he goes out there. Hopefully he gets another job as an offensive coordinator, shows that he is the real deal, and gets an opportunity as a head coaching job. Today is Wednesday, which means it's Ask Mikey and Mitch night. We've gotten some questions. I appreciate the interaction. We have gotten a lot of um, questions from Twitter. We've gotten some questions for our guest, Jordan Thompson, who should be here any minute. And uh, we appreciate that. Obviously, if you have any other questions, get it in the chat. Ask them as we go out throughout the course of the show. Our great producer, who is Lloyd, is going to read them out, put them on the screen. We have this new little graphic that we can do and just pop them up on the screen. So uh, we appreciate that. Chat GPT. Yeah. Well, you wish you had that in college. Good Lord. I wish I had that in college, too. Pitchers, catchers report, MLB spring training. <laughs> I was starting. Chat GPT. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't have to. That was the one thing that you didn't have to worry about. Not at all. Yeah. You could write you were like what English major or something? Sports admin. The but, whole time we were journalists. I thought you were a journalist major. Well, until they made me take Spanish. But my baseball oh, coach go. taught me Spanish and he gave me all the answers to the test. So I never learned Spanish. Walk into Spanish Didn't know and Spanish. they're speaking only Spanish. And you I realized I don't know. I this. did the Simpsons gif where I walked in, you just took right the hat and put it right back on and left. And I was like, oh, looks like I'm changing my major. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but <laughs> I did get hired thinking that I, people thought I had a journalism degree, there you go. which is pretty impressive. There you go. There you go. That's good. Did you lie on your resume? No, he just uh, never read it. Oh, there you go. That's hmm. good. Just, read, not, my, that's not just on you. read my work. That's not on you. That's on them. Yeah. You know, now obviously we're not journalists. We're kind of in the journalism game. We're not, I don't even call us journalists. No. You know? We're just freedom of speech. Two idiots talking on, on three. Camera. Three idiots talking on camera. Really together. one. Yeah. Me. Yeah. yeah. No. Y'all have some. Yeah. People yeah. believe what y'all say more than they believe what yeah, I say. I don't know why. We're still a little full of shit. So yeah, <laughs> that's not part of it. Got yeah, um, the resume. Yeah, we have a little bit of the resume. Yeah, they don't. They don't have to read all of it. Just read a little bit of the resume. Just the little headlines of the resume. But uh, spring training starts. Pitch play professional starts baseball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, pitchers catchers report. This is the official start of spring training. Uh, position players report a week after, and uh, so you can start to see some storylines. There's a lot of free agents still in the market. All right, there. There's today, already one storyline out. What is that? The Grom's a little hurt again. Yeah, but I think yeah. I mean, we. Like, yeah, I know, you gotta yeah, look at, come on. They man. said that they're not worried about it. They're gonna. He's just gonna miss the first few yeah. days because of the cold weather, all this stuff, and <laughs> oh, we'll see. The Grom has been on the DL every year, or IL. They call it now. Every year for the last few years, yeah. he has avoided all of the major injuries. So they paid him a lot of money. I know that they're hoping. That, nobody, nobody likes to see him really even with a hangnail or anything because we all know when he's on the mound and he's active, 
he's explosive. Um, That's the problem baseball. is keeping him there for a long time has been over the last couple of years has been tough. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, obviously, we're going to get into a lot of the Major League Baseball stuff throughout the course of the year. Today is about college baseball. Like I said, we are two days away from opening day. Right. And I'm pumped because we have, like, if you listen to, to Jay Johnson speak, um, wait, hold on. Our guest is here. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Is there any Thursday games around the, around, I guess, around the country? Because it's opening opening here Friday night, but I'm wondering if there's any. I don't know. Maybe opening weekend is going to be tough to have maybe a Thursday game. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe. Unless there's like a tournament somewhere, maybe. 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 But with, like Jay has come on the show, yeah. right? He's come on other interviews, not just talking to us. And he's talked about there's four guys on this team offensively, specifically, that you can mark it down on the scorecard every day. They are going to be starting. Right, obviously Dylan Cruz, obviously Tommy White, obviously Trey Morgan. Uh, Trey Morgan, and he always mentions Jordan Thompson. We've been a fan of Jordan, obviously. We've seen the ability to play shortstop at a high level. Obviously, people look at something in a bubble sometimes, and they just kind of get a per- the perception of somebody that may be unfair. Yeah. And I think that's what happened to him at the beginning of last year. Towards the end of the year, people don't like to see – Towards the end of the year, if it changes the narrative of some people, they don't yeah. like to see the back end of it that changes the what they already have perceived in their head, right? Yeah. And so, once a show, once a show. You've been good lately, though. You've yeah, I know, I know. Um, and so I think that they just forget to look at the the back end of the year. Listen, he had 18 errors last year. He will come in here. I'm sure he'll tell you that's not what that's not up to his standard. But if you look at the back half of the year, he did not have a ton. Yeah. Right? He played extremely well yeah. defensively. The guy that we saw as a freshman, and uh, he had a Good offensive year. I think that he's got a lot more in the tank offensively, yeah. and that's some of the stuff that I want to talk to him about. Listen, baseball is always about adversity. How do you how do you overcome adversity? How do you go? Through? Listen, I went in the big in the major league baseball on national TV. Well, I guess more regional TV in baseball <laughs> in Tampa. Middle of the season, I went. I was in an 0 for 34 slump. You know, you think that was fun? You think people thought that I wasn't very good at baseball at that time? At you, but they allowed me to overcome it, and get past it. 2019, no, they didn't allow me to get past this one, but <laughs> 2019, I started the season at 0 for 23. Now, it wasn't like it was a – I was hitting some balls hard, just not getting any hits. They take me off, took me off the roster. I had to deal with that. I had to overcome yeah. that. I had to see, okay, what do I need? I had to reevaluate what went wrong, why did it go wrong. Obviously, a lot of it is mental and a lot of it comes from the head. But um, baseball, more so than a lot of other sports, has a lot of – mental anguish and adversity and i think that that's something i really want to ask him about and talk to him about because you learn a lot about yourself so i know he is here i'm going to stop talking and allow them to come in i guess they're here yeah, they're lloyd here. are you here they're here they're in it they're here he parked in the uh the neighbor's spot Ooh, you can't neighbor. do that so i'm moving his car and then we'll all bring him in okay perfect perfect <laughs> perfect yeah we'll keep we'll keep rambling on yeah um, but that's that's part of I've been wanting him to come on the show because those are conversations that I really want to get into. I think that's what kind of separates our show from some other shows, right? Like you're able to kind of get in the weeds of, hey, what was going through your mind? How did you overcome it? Right. And like my whole goal would be able to get him comfortable. We have been able to do that so that they open up and you don't get the stop. I also think it, it allows an opportunity too for, you know, like you've mentioned with him coming on and he's with, with Jay coming on to our show and also being on other shows and him mentioning those four key guys, it's going to give you some insight as to why Jay trusts him the way he does and why he feels like he belongs in that conversation and belongs in the lineup day in and day out, pretty much no matter what he does. Yeah. Right. So I think, People, because I think he's more of a quiet guy. So I don't think people have kind of gotten a lot. I see. I think that he. They say. No, no, he, they say his personality is a plus. No, like, yeah, off the but, charts, funny. No, yeah, that's in the clubhouse. So that's yeah, that's. Yeah, a, right. We know a lot of those guys, you know, but you don't see him outwardly speaking and doing yeah. a lot, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just him. Well, look, and here's my other thing, right? And like people, like I said, perception is what you make it, right? Exactly. And people have a certain perception about him or some other players, yeah. right? Well, people's perception of Jay is, oh, we trust him. Look what he's done in the transfer portal. Look at the talent he's brought in. 
Look at the people that have bought into what his message is. And if Jay is sitting in front of the camera telling you this guy is on the field every single day, mark him down as a shortstop, that should give you the confidence that you need to say, you know what, maybe let me just take a step You're back. You're going to get an opportunity yeah. tonight to understand why Jay feels the way he does. Right, work. right. So um, I guess my, my whole message would be like, let's hold off judgment. Let's say, hey, this guy, you know, listen, there's some people that watch me play baseball at a certain stretch of time in my career and said, this guy sucks. This guy, this guy, like this guy played in the big leagues or this guy's like, how is this guy playing professional baseball? And there's other people that have seen me at a stretch of time. Like, damn, how is this guy not still playing? Not still playing, right? <laughs> right? Like he played, I've seen him play for a month and he's been great. <clears throat> That's baseball, yep. right? That's the up and down of baseball. Now, you know, the, the great ones stay consistent, but the great ones have also gone through you a lot get, of adversity. Listen, we can catch anyone, anyone in any given month and see him hitting 150. I guarantee you, you can pull up a, a month every single year, probably of his career right now. Mike Trout's got hey, a listen, month where he's hitting Mike 150. Trout got, Mike Trout was Everyone the, does. Mike Trout was super prospect. Let yeah. me get to the big leagues at 19. He gets called up to the big leagues. He hit 170. And it wasn't good. Like, he wasn't hitting Everyone balls hard. Everyone has these things. And he got optioned yeah. down. So that happens, right? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, we're gonna. Well, I, you have to come in and give us a little break. He's look there. He is. There he is. All right, you're watching mic'd up. We're gonna take a 30 second break. Get Jordan set up, and uh, we'll be right back. What? Saved him from a lawsuit. Yeah, that guy. That guy's dangerous over there. He don't. He don't like it. Oh, play. he went next yeah. door here. Ooh, mm. Yeah, that yeah, ain't yeah. the one. All right. All right. See you in 30 seconds. Hey everybody, it's Mikey Montek from Mike. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. Take two. Ready? Action. Hey, everybody. It's Mikey Montuk from Liked Up. I mean. I couldn't help it. Did you start elaborating? I was laughing. I mean. All right, come on. Let's get it. Keep it going? No, you got to do the whole thing. Hey everybody, it's Mikey Matuk from Miked Up. If you haven't already subscribed and liked to our sh liked our show, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe to our show. Let's yes, go. this is great. Take four. <laughs> like and subscribed. Like I like a nice bit of credits, baby. I like show. the credits. Let's go. Outtakes. Let's go. Lock it up. I got it. Hey everybody, it's Mike. My phone fucking ran. <laughs> My phone ran. <laughs> Let's go. I'm oh, setting up. up. Yeah, I'm setting up. Hey, everybody. It's Mikey Matuk from Miked Up. If you haven't already liked or subscribed to our show, we're live every Monday, Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. from our studio. Come hang out with the boys, me, Jay Mitch. Jackie Boy, Lloyd, Lloyd has his shenanigans up in the corner. Come hang out with us again. Like and subscribe. We're live Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Come hang out with us. We appreciate all the love. See you on the show. Welcome back to Miked Up. Uh, as we mentioned in the Heineken headlines, you didn't. I need to bring the Heinekens in so you can start. I think it needs to be a beer a day for you. I, I know. That's tough. That, that is tough for me because I'm not a beer drinker, as been pointed out by everybody and their mother on social media. Well, what, how we gotten the. Uh, you, you put yourself in there. I know, the gift from a gamer. Our, have, we getting, have we gotten the <laughs> gift from a longtime listener? We did. We got it today. Perfect. So now we definitely need to. Yeah, Friday. We're not telling anybody what it is. No. I want you to just but pull it, it out. It should increase my time in the show. Right. Heineken, go ahead and give it a little, give a a little pub. pub out of Heineken Silver. Nothing better. Nothing better. It's easy so good. to chug, easy to pour. Well, that's not, yeah. You know, it's easy It's easy to chug. Well, not really easy for you because you didn't do a very good job of chugging it. Or 12 shotgunning. seconds chugging a beer? Or good, shotgunning. bad? He spilt it all over himself. No, barely. <laughs> barely <laughs> spilled it. Anyway, Heineken Silver is their We're light not beer. I'm going to talk about the shotgun. Oh, yeah. so yeah. The shotgun one. was a debacle. Heineken Silver <laughs> is Heineken's light beer. It's 95 calories. It's comparable to like what a Michelob would be. Um, I'm not a huge Heineken fan, normal Heineken fan, but Heineken Silver actually is very good. Like I said, it's going to be in the rotation of. This is a game day beer. The ice chests. Yes. When I go tailgate to watch Jordan Thompson, the boys play, 
because I can do that now because I'm not I'm no longer an athlete. I can go and I'll just I'll have Heineken Silver. Much to the chagrin of many people. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Big former guy. A big former guy. <laughs> big former guy. But with that, I'm not going to keep him long. He's got quizzes and stuff that he has to do tonight. I don't uh, want quiz student right. before athlete first. For now. Uh, for now. Starting right. shortstop for the LSU number one team in the country. LSU Fighting Tigers, Jordan Thompson. Jordan, thank you for coming on the show, dude. Appreciate you. Lloyd, can you set his mic up, please? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, Going sorry. to you. I'm you sorry. filibuster for Yeah, I'm a filibuster. <laughs> We just listen. We 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 didn't get prepared, we, you know. We had a meeting. Yeah, we had a meeting. We had a lot of things going on. Jordan parked in the the parking lot of somebody who doesn't. Is the not one very, is not very fun. Yeah, he's not very. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Booted to. Actually, I don't know if they booted him. Yeah, but my man spent a lot of money when he saw this yeah. thing going on. This the way. fence up and everything. <laughs> he went every. Yeah. They built, right. they built the fence, then tore it down and rebuilt it. <laughs> mm. Tough. All right, JT. Thanks for coming on the show. Yep. All right. Two days away from the season. What's the vibe? What's the feel like in the clubhouse? Obviously, you have a ton of hype, you know, which is fine. How are y'all embracing that hype? And how is, uh, you know, the morale or how's the energy going into Friday? Dude, it's great. I mean, we're just super excited. You know, we're ready to play. I feel like we've been ready to play for the past couple of weeks. And uh, I think one of the things that stands out to me is like the freshmen talking about how excited yeah. they are. For it to go on, it's like they don't even know what's about to happen. Like they know like opening day, but it's like it's more than just opening day or more than just the first game of the season. You right. know, the feelings. It's just, I don't know, it's something you can't really like speak on. It's just yeah. an incredible feeling. You're the season just, vet uh, now, right? You got yeah. just year three. Yep. Year three as a starter. As a freshman, obviously, I told the story. Like my first game when I was starting, like I was in the cage at like 1245, yeah. dripping sweat, like mm -hmm. panic. I'm sure some, I, mean, I was piped, right, ready to go. I'm sure a lot of these freshmen are doing the same way. Mm -hmm. As a junior, though, I, it, it was a whole different feel. It was like, okay, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. I was a little more relaxed. Do you kind of get that sense? And if yeah. you do, what do you kind of, what advice are you giving some of the young guys kind of heading into Friday? Because yeah. Friday is probably the most hype they're going to be yeah. until SEC starts and then mm -hmm. until postseason starts, right? Like the first game of everything is always the most hype. So, what kind of advice are you giving them? I mean, obviously, we're all going to be super excited. Like, everyone's going to have the juices flowing and stuff like that. But you really just got to concentrate on, like, what makes you you. Like, the type of routine that you have. Like, sticking to it every single day. Like, you can't change what you do every single day or the things that make you good just because of the game or right. what's going to happen. I mean, like, I know a lot of guys maybe, like, they'll get there super early just because, like, it's opening day. And they want to hit a little bit extra, but it's like if that's not their thing, that like yeah, I don't routine. Know, like yeah, you gotta yeah. stick yeah. to what makes you yeah. you, what yeah. makes you yeah. good. So I mean, absolutely. I, I only have online classes this semester, so wow. that's like huge. Oh, yeah, so you just like, guys living the we, life I, right we, now. We work out in the morning, so like at eight or nine, I'll get my lift in, I'll go get my breakfast, and that's like I'm back at the field at eleven o'clock, hitting, doing my routine that I do every single day. I'll go get food again, sit down for a little bit, hit again, and then practice goes on. But it's like. I mean, that's just something that I'm able to do every day right. that, you know, I can control, you know. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of baseball, mm. right? Like, guys are around the clubhouse all the time, yeah. hanging out, shooting yeah. the shit, doing mm. whatever. And that's I think that's how you build, you know, the chemistry mm. on the team, especially all the new guys that you have. Like, I'm sure that's helped, oh, yeah. you know, the transition of these guys coming in, some of these, these freshmen. Jay, I mean, you got something? So, repetitions is experience. Experience mm. allows you to learn yourself. Yeah. So, you talk about this being opening day in two days. Mm. So for you, what have you learned about yourself going into an opening day as a freshman and now being able to do it on year three? What things have changed? What have you, what have stuck, what has stuck with you from those days and what's allowing you to be at your best when it comes yeah. Friday night? I think uh, I've noticed that those first couple games like tend to like just speed up. Like things are going quicker just because, you know, you haven't done it in a while. Um, so I don't know. You know, just kind of like relaxing, being in the present, knowing that, you know, I've done this before and it's just another game. I mean, this first game isn't going to be any different than the last game of the season in, in the sense where it's like if I come up with a runner on second base in whatever situation, I'm just trying to drive a ball to the middle of the field. I'm not right. trying to do anything different than I do every single day or like different than practice. You know, like we go over every type of situation that we're going to be in like during practice. So like take that same type of preparation and trusting it instead of like, oh my God, like I need to get a hit right, right here. It's right. like, nah, I take my deep breath, you know, know what I'm going to do. Like I have a plan, we have our approach, we have a good like scattering for it. So let I mean, Jay Johnson really come and talk to you right before you're at bat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, oh, I told Jay, I told, I've told Jay, I was like, mm. ah, 
I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. Like, <laughs> like if I was a guy, we, we busted about it. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, like, listen, now if there's a situation, I understand it, but like, mm-hmm. but you said it helps. I you think he helps. has really good feel for the moment that yeah. that it happens. I think uh, maybe walking up to the plate if he knows a pitching change is going to happen, or if. Like, he's noticed something and he'll tell you. Like, I like that, knowing, like, right. what to do before I go up to the plate. But there's also times where I'm in the middle of an at-bat and, say, I got a bad strike called on me or I took a bad swing and maybe I looked mad or upset and I step out of the box. He'll, like, look at me, say something, like, and just calm us down, get us, like, right back into the present into the moment, like, right. letting that yeah. go. And now I'm back here. So I think in that sense, he's really good about it. So, I mean, I enjoy it. When he does it, it's very right. beneficial for me, I feel like. We spoke with Jay last Monday. Obviously, he comes on the show a lot. Mm. And, um, you know, he's pretty honest and upfront and, you know, open about a lot of different things. Yeah. And he talked about how he's pretty close on deciding, uh, figuring out who the starting lineup would be, at least on opening day, right? Like, it's going to be, y'all are so deep and you have a lot of guys that yeah. you can rotate in and out that there's going to be some change throughout the course of the year, Right. But with, when he mentions these types of things, there's four guys in the lineup that he says it's in there every single day, right? Dylan Cruz, Tommy White, Trey Morgan, Trey Morgan and you, right? And it's kind of my segue into the next question, right, is you have been here for three years. You've been the starting shortstop for three years. You're very good defensively. Last year... You struggled early on defensively. I think that there are some reasons there, but what I respected was you didn't make any excuses. You didn't come out there in the media and say why this is happening, but you had a knee procedure. You still weren't 100%, but you went through there every day and posted up every day. Towards the end of the year, you played great, right? People's perception is what they want their reality to be. So they forget about that last month, two months of the season. They only see the beginning of it, right? And so... I guess my question to you is when you went through all of those struggles and then you see Jay come out there uh, and vocally promote, say, hey, he's our guy. He's going to be in there yeah. with the, along the lines with everyone else. How does that make you feel? And what did you do to be able to overcome that? What did you learn about yourself? I mean, just you got to stick to it, man. I mean, early in the season, like I had that surgery right before the season started. And uh, like you say, like during the beginning of the season, kind of struggled defensively, wasn't able to get to some balls I wanted to get to or maybe – my footing, like feet weren't working the way that, you know. How important that before. is, is that with exactly, throwing the yeah. football, throwing the football, yeah. throwing the baseball I mean, across it, the I mean, it all like works together, yep. you know, you got you to gotta have good feet. It's and there were some, yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. there were some times where I wasn't able to make the moves that I wanted to make. But I mean, if I didn't go through what I had to go through the first month of the season, am I the guy that I was at the end of the season when I was making plays or when I was coming through hitting and stuff like that? So I think... It was one of those things where it's like, okay, from November until probably a week and a half before the season, it's like I wasn't really doing much. Right. You know, like I wasn't feeling good. I didn't I didn't know that I was going to need surgery from November or like between November and yeah. January. It just didn't um, get better. That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we came back and it was like, yo, I, we need to get something done. So we ended up getting it scoped out and stuff like that. Had a bunch of scar tissue removed. And uh, I mean, it was supposed to be like an eight week recovery process, something like that. And I was... I mean, playing in the starting lineup three weeks yeah. later. So and, I mean, and everyone's body, like you, mm-hmm. everyone's body recovers different. Yeah, and that's what people don't understand too. Like they tell you eight weeks. Obviously, you started before the yeah. eight weeks, but people sit here and think, well, eight weeks, it should be good. Yeah, mm, it doesn't really work. Yeah, that well, way. that's what I'm saying. So it's like, I mean, I went in there and I, I knew what what I had to do. I mean, I had to play shortstop for our team to be the best team that we wanted to be. And uh, I'm not gonna say that. The knee uh, surgery is the reason why I made all the errors that I made. But, I mean, if you came three weeks off of surgery, right. are you going to be the best shortstop in the country? Right. You know, I mean, but it was just one of those things where it's like those first, that first month of the season was like, that's when I'm getting my game reps to be ready yep. right. for the end of the season right. when we need to be the best. Yeah. Right. You know, and I feel like going through what I went through, I mean, I was just putting my head down. Like, all of the, the coaches knew, like, everyone in the locker room knew what I had gone through, what I was going through, and where I needed to be at the end of the season. So it was just one of those things where it's like, you know, we're, we're riding with this, and, you know, what's, whatever happens is going to happen. But, I mean, we went out there every single day, and it didn't stop us from showing up early, working hard, and trying to get everything figured out. Right. You know? Now, what makes LSU so great are the fans, right? Like, mm-hmm. they're passionate, they love it, but the negative part of that is they're passionate and they love it and they, <laughs> they can be brutal sometimes, right? Like they see something, they want to see what they thought was going to happen. It's mm-hmm. not happening, right? So I'd imagine going through that stretch, like 
Now, it's tough because, you know, not a lot of places around the country, really outside the SEC, have the following that LSU baseball has, right? If you're struggling at UCLA, nobody is really going to be talking much about it because nobody's seen it. But here you get 12,000 a game. Mm -hmm. It's important to Baton Rouge. It's important to Louisiana. And so it it gets magnified, right? And I'd imagine through that course of the month, six weeks, however long it was, you had some some doubts in yourself and some like some low points. Do you can you pinpoint like there was a point in time like Dan, this was the lowest I was, and then I had to like figure out a way to get out of it. And how did you get out of it? I mean, I don't know. Like it's just one of those things where like coming out of high school, it's not something that you really deal with. Like, and if I were to have gone to Pro Bowl out of high school, like would I have dealt with that the right way? You know. Right. So being able to be in the situation that I was, I mean, I'm kind of glad that. I went through what I went through when I did because that made me the play the baseball player I am today, like the person I am today, having gone through those experiences. Um, but I mean, you try not to like look at it and see that stuff, but right. like obviously it's like like you're gonna see some of the things. But I mean, you just gotta put your head down. Like I knew who I was as a player, and I knew that what I was doing was for the benefit of the team, even though like maybe from the outside looking right. in, it didn't always look like that. But there was a bigger plan and purpose for what that team like had. So, I mean, it, it was like, it was easier for me to yeah. just put my head down and keep going every single day, you know, instead of letting that affect me in, in any type of way. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's a, honestly a great answer. I think he's going through it. I'm going through it. I'm pretty sure that that was your moment. I think, especially once you get here. Mm-hmm everybody is going to go through that like proverbial fork in the road where it's either left and it's perfect use of proverbial you're out of here or right and it's i'm gonna figure it out and i'm gonna get it done yeah i think a lot of you know you probably hit that point where you felt like i took the right turn Mm -hmm. and i'm on the right way yeah being your third year here Mm -hmm. being that there's younger guys obviously more freshmen i'm sure there that has allowed you to kind of be able to be like an older mentor to these guys how do you take? How do you approach those situations? And knowing that you've gone through things you've gone through, and how mm-hmm. can you convey help to those younger guys as they're trying to find yeah. their way? You know. Well, I think that it's huge. Like for me to be able to do that to a younger guy, it's like there were guys like Cade Beloso and Gavin Dugas that were doing that for me when I was a freshman. Like Cade Doty was a big one for me, like throughout mm-hmm. the past couple of years. So having those guys yeah. like in my corner and seeing the way that they went about it when I was struggling, it was like okay. I've been through some tough things and I know like how it can like go one way or the other, like you said, and like you see some freshmen that maybe aren't having a good week or aren't having a good couple of days, whatever it is. I mean, it's easier for me to know like what it takes for me to get the best out of them without it take, without them taking it the wrong way and stuff like that. So I don't know. I think just having that chain of older players and leaders that like do it the right mm-hmm. way and show you like, what it takes and that you can't like let one day or one at bat whatever it is like go to the next pitch you know you really have to separate it that fast or else like you're gonna struggle yeah Yeah, that's what i'm saying so i think having those older guys when i was a freshman that led me in that direction it's just been easier for me to just like do it like unconsciously not even like having to go up to a kid it's just like hey like what's up bro like how you doing like hey fine like yeah just stuff like that you know right yeah well, especially in a place at like LSU, and I don't want to harp on the injury thing, but I do want to get your perspective just a little bit of how hard it was for you to see the outside noise and hear from other people. Like, obviously, it was prevalent on every social media outlet. There's no nothing you can really do to avoid mm-hmm. it. For you to be able to internalize that, be able to get uh, almost climb that mountaintop, yeah. and be able to say, "Y'all saw me at sixty percent. Wait till I get to a hundred percent." Was that kind of the mindset going into it? Yeah, I mean, you kind of. I, I mean, at that point, you kind of just like you got to block it out. Yeah. It's <laughs> like I know who I am as a player um, and the things that I've done. Like I've had some really good moments here, and I've had some moments that probably weren't as great. But like knowing what I can do, and like knowing that you know I'm not even playing like at the level that I know right. that I want to be able to play at. It's like. I spent the whole summer and fall basically getting myself to be 100% to where, like, I have no Not doubt. even 100%. Like, yeah. if, if you're going into that year, mm-hmm. it's just, I'm just trying to get on the field because yeah. I know they need me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. It, it just takes a lot. I mean, you really got to be there mentally. Like, yeah. you can't, like, you really can't let that stuff affect you as hard as it is to, like, like easier said than done. I mean, like, you really just got to put your head down and know, like, 
yourself as a player and like your teammates right. around you and stuff like that when everyone's got your back and your exactly. coaches yeah. have the confidence in you like it's like why I think that why goes, wouldn't i go out there and do everything right and i think that's gonna be more like you look everybody looks at the talent in the lineup mm-hmm. and everybody looks at the talent in the pitching staff but i think what they don't see is the stuff that you're talking about, right? Yeah. The guys who have your back and the guys that mm-hmm. are in your corner and the guys who are picking you up when you're struggling. Yeah. And I think that's the separator mm-hmm. from teams who are talented to teams who are talented but also win, yeah. right? And I think that y'all have that, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, we're talking about you, and I want to keep talking about you, but I want to kind of shift gears to the offensive side, yeah. right? You talked about some of the big moments. One of the biggest moments they had to be the walk-off homer yeah. in Minute Maid, right? Yeah. Like that was – Electric, like I was watching it, it was mm-hmm. it was unbelievable, right? Yeah. So that's something that everybody wants. And you're a kid, you're in the backyard, oh, five and nine, two outs, like walk off homer. That's the yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Um, but offensively, right? So sometimes defense and the struggles lead to the offensive struggles, right? Because you're in your own head and you're doing some things. Last year, you had a pretty good offensive season, I would say, right? Like you hit what two eighty six, yeah. and you had um, what, six or seven homers, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. What do you want to do offensively to take the next step and say, you know, because I think just from watching, like there's a lot more in there, yeah, right? Like there's a lot more juice in the bat, mm. right? There's a lot more, hey, because you came up clutch a lot. Yeah. Like you had a lot of big moments where they need when you, they needed you, you came up, yeah. right? So how do you, over the off season and over the course of the fall, train yourself or teach yourself how to, hey, I need to be more consistent. What have you mm-hmm. done to like, improve that part of yeah it. well i think the biggest thing for me is going back for the season pass and seeing like where i was really good and where i wasn't as good and what i was doing okay and i see at the back half of the season i was probably the most consistent that i was the whole year and i was like kind of just really simple with my approach you know i was getting my foot down and i was seeing the ball for a long time i was able to use my eyes i was laying off tough pitches i was getting on base like more than i had the whole season so i think just building off that and knowing that okay I know what it takes for me to be good, and now I just need to be able to stack the days where I'm just, you know, getting 1% better every single yep. day, you know, and not trying to do more than, than what I need to you. do. Right. Exactly, yeah. I think there were times where it's like, okay, if I struggle, I was probably trying to do more than I was capable of. We're trying to let the moment be bigger than it actually was. And I think the biggest difference between going from freshman year to where I am now, it's like I know how to calm myself down or I know how to keep myself in the present and work from pitch to pitch instead of at bat to at bat or game to game and stuff like that. So I think having Jay in your corner's got to mm-hmm. help a little bit too, no, right? 100%. Like obviously you've you've paid your dues, you've been here for a while. Mm-hmm. You're the guy, you're the veteran guy at shortstop. And I'm not saying that you get complacent and you don't yeah. work hard because I'm the starter, but knowing that the head guy is saying, "Hey, he is our starting shortstop. Mm-hmm. He's going to be in the lineup every day." That's got to give you some um, vote of confidence. Yeah, some confidence mm-hmm. in like, "Hey, if, if I struggle the first you know week or two offensively or defensively, like." He's gonna stick with me, mm. and like he knows it because he's seen it, right? That's gotta help a little. No, one hundred percent. Knowing that he has that type of trust, it mean, yeah. it just makes you like play free and like really allows yourself to be you and just go out there every day and you know have fun, really. Right. So but, I mean, it's huge. For okay, us. but with that, so here's a I guess a two part question in mm-hmm. a way because just like you said, like baseball is un- is in- it's like unpredictable, yeah. right? Like you could be the hottest man ever in every scrimmage you show up and mm-hmm. all of a sudden opening day shows up and I don't I don't have a hit for the first four Coach, days. you can yeah. be hot for three and a half months and not getting out and then all of a sudden, and all of a sudden it, it goes see, nowhere. What's going yeah. on. So two part question and I'm a firm believer in this. I think every player gets the best out of themselves defensively mm-hmm. when they are performing near what they think they are at the plate. With like how you view yourself at the plate. Mm-hmm. So how do you view yourself as a hitter when you're at your best? And two, how hard is it for you to separate the offensive side from the defensive side and understand that as a shortstop in the middle of that infield, you have to be present there at all mm-hmm. points, no matter what happens on the offensive side. Mm-hmm. So how do you view yourself and how do you separate those two things? Yeah, I mean, when I'm going good and I'm locked in, confident at the plate, I feel like I can't miss a barrel or like, the pitcher I'm, can't get me. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. And I'm glad matter. you say that too, because yeah. a lot of people don't understand. Like, yeah. I could be, I don't know, dude. I could be hitting 400 over my last five games and literally haven't hit a barrel. Yeah. And people don't understand. Like that stuff weighs on people. Yeah. Because like, you're always trying to find barrel. Mm-hmm. I could be, oh, for my last eight. If it's eight barrels, you're probably not gonna tell me anything. I don't yeah. really care, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, when when I'm confident, and locked in, and stuff like that, it's like I, I genuinely do feel like you know I can't miss a barrel, or I'm taking pitches and I'm gonna get on first base. I mean, it, and it doesn't matter 
what the guy's throwing, if he's throwing 98 or if he's throwing 88, like whatever it is, when you're in that zone, like, right. I mean, yeah, yeah that's like, a good like, spot you know to be. Yeah. That's like, a good spot to be. It doesn't matter. Like, you, you step walk into up to the, the box, box you almost, cocky, it's yeah, like, well, strike it's one, like, don't care. My yeah. freshman year, K Doty had a week where he hit like six home runs. I remember that. It was like the week he came back after yeah. he was hurt. Yeah. And I remember talking to him, and it was like, he said, I can't imagine going up to the plate and not hitting a home run. Right, you know, and like right. there's times where it's like you go through that where it's like you know I'm like I'm not getting out like it doesn't matter, yep. um, and then again like separating that I mean I think definitely when things are going good at the plate and then you run back out to your position you kind of have like a different type of like a little bounce to you yeah, yeah. exactly yeah it's like like I'm not gonna say like cockiness or arrogance but like you definitely feel it you know what I'm saying and you should that's how you yeah. should feel yeah. right like, and that's awesome because it makes you play even mm-hmm. better but. Like, I think, again, going back from my freshman year to where I am now, like, being able to separate that, like, okay, when I'm doing good at the plate, like, I know I'm going to play the best defense. But if I'm not doing great at the plate, I have to be even better on defense. Yep. Like, that has to right. be the mentality, you right. know. Well, and then like, watching baseball now, like, the way baseball is sh- the highest level, right? If you mm-hmm. look at it, it used to be if you don't hit, you're not in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Now you're looking at it and you're seeing some guys who are like, damn, this guy can't hit. Yeah. But they find a spot for him because he's that good defensively. So that's kind of – it's a little bit old school in that sense. Everything else about the game is kind of new school, but in, the, in that way, it's like, hey, you know what? If this guy is that good defensively and we have to have him in the lineup, they're going to find a spot for you. That's got to help say, you know what? I don't just have to hit. Because mm-hmm. when I was coming up, if you didn't hit, yeah. you ain't playing. Yeah. You know what I mean, that was just the thing. And right? if you hit, they found a spot for you. Yeah, <laughs> right. It didn't matter what, you, what else yeah, you could exactly. do. Yeah, they didn't value defense as much. Now they do, and mm-hmm. I think that's at least confidence-wise, and that's something that pushes you. Like, you know what? Yeah. I got to. I gotta focus defensively because yeah, no, sure. that matters. Yeah, no, well, we no, and, and, yeah, and you can. See, and, oh God! Whoa! What the heck? Oh, was that? I'm gone. And you can <laughs> see like the def- like you can see when people are out there like if they've struggled at the plate when they go even doesn't matter what position you play. Mm-hmm. I know they do it a lot in outfield. When you see people start working on like their swing yeah. in the middle of taking ground balls, yeah. like he's still thinking about his last at yeah. bat. Whenever you can wash that off and be mm-hmm. like, all right, I'm stroking at the dish. Like I can just go out here. That's when you start backhanding, like yeah. doing stuff at in the middle of the infield where you feel like. I can't miss a ground ball either. Like yeah. that's when everything kind of comes together. Oh, yeah. When you have the team that y'all have, there's, especially with the vote of confidence you got last year yeah. with Jay Johnson, it feels like that's not something that you have to worry about. Like it's mm-hmm. not a situation where right. you have to look over your shoulder, regardless of the people that they've added, because yeah. y'all added some studs in the that, portal. I'm glad you said because I want to get into the team mm-hmm. a little bit, right? Like yeah. the expectations are high. We were on the team in '09. We won it, and mm-hmm. the expectations mm-hmm. were they weren't as high as they are for y'all. Like we were number one in the country, but y'all are like the consensus number one team in the country, right? Yeah. And when we were there, those expectations, they had gone to Omaha the year before. I came in as a freshman. Those expectations were, we wanted those. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we felt like we deserved. We've earned that. And now we go on the field and say, hey, we have to prove that. Mm-hmm. And that's what we wanted. Like, that was our motivating factor. We didn't say, oh, we're number one. We're going to be fine. What's the mindset? I'd imagine it's kind of similar to that. Mm-hmm. You know, before the season starts, like, you like the fact that you have the target on your back? Oh, 100%. 100%. I think uh, it gives us even more confidence, you know, because we know, like, the type of talent that we have in the locker room and stuff like that, but we also put in the work every single day. Right. Like, practice doesn't start till 2.30, like, usually every single day, but there's guys there from 9 o'clock until 9 o'clock every single day. Right. So, I mean, like, we know, like, just from our preparation standpoint, like, we're prepared, we're ready to go. And then you add the talent that we have and stuff like that. I mean, it's just like... Did Jay and Jay's come on here and say he kind of knows who he's gonna have, and I think he said he know better, have a better idea starting Monday. Mm-hmm. Has he? You don't have to tell me and disclose it, but has he told y'all who the starting lineup's gonna be? I guess he disclosed that information to y'all already. Like, hey, this is gonna be our Friday mm-hmm. and opening day lineup. Uh, he has, no, he has no, not said no, anything. He has to not said uh, um, or anything like that. I know Paul's pitching. That's about it. No. Yeah, yeah, right. I think I think we all. Yeah. He already came out. I think I, he came I out. That for How sure. has he been? Pitching. I mean, he's, he's been, been he's nasty. Yeah, I think D, been I think DC will probably be in center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Playing center. Yeah, I think sure. we know we know those. But like, yeah. you know, obviously you have so many guys, mm-hmm. right? There's so many players on the team. Yeah. You know, you have some veteran guys. I mean, you have Schubert hit 18 homers last year, and people aren't even mentioning him in the outfit. I would imagine that he would start this the game at least Friday, just because he's a veteran as as one of the starters on Friday. I would just. I have no reason to say that other than the fact that he was there, he had 18 homers, whatever. And you some guys played a little bit last year. There's probably a couple, two positions that are coin flip up for grabs, and that would probably be second base and the catching position, mm-hmm. right? So second base, you know, that's your battery mate. Like, that's yeah. the guy that you have to turn double plays with. Jay's mentioned four guys that he likes there. Yeah. 
what do you see but from the second base position? You don't have to tell me who the favorite is or mm-hmm. who you like better better there, but as far as the guys that are talented, like what are mm-hmm. you seeing from that position? I think the versatility is just really cool to see. Like we have the left handed bats, we have the right handed bats, we have the right handed power bats that could all fit that position. That they, they they can all turn the ball. Like right. You know, whoever coach decides to put there is going to be able to get the job done on a daily basis, whatever right. it is. Or if it's someone that starts and plays five five innings and then gets substituted in, like, because a new pitcher comes in, yeah. like, full confidence that they're going to be able to do the job at the plate and then do the job on defense. So I think having that is, like, I don't know, it's something different because you don't always have that type of depth or versatility. I mean, right. you say that in the outfield, too. Like, we got – we got, Six, seven guys. We got there. guys, you know, yeah. like that like can play. Like Paxton Kling's yeah. gonna fight for like, a spot like for the freshman. There, yeah. Just you have guys that are gonna be yeah. first rounder after first rounder exactly, coming out yeah. of the outfield. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's really cool to see because like you have those players that are gonna be great. That are gonna be major league baseball players that you know might not play every single game, but like they still go out there every day. They work super hard, and you know, no like doubt. we know they're gonna be good. We know what we're working for, right. and like everyone is accepting like the role that yeah. that like that it takes for us to be the best team possible especially for this team the buy in yeah from it oh, 100% from a position player standpoint cuz we haven't really gotten we've gotten Jay's kind of point of view of this thing maybe a little bit of Wes's kind of ours too but mm-hmm. like we haven't gotten a chance to talk to like any position players since this is kind of formed to where the team is right now so from a position player standpoint the arms you're seeing on this team right now. <laughs> yeah. How, <laughs> how impressive how impressive is it and how like how does it feel knowing that dude these are the guys we're going to get to play behind and then obviously these are the same guys that's going to be getting us back into the dugout. How do you feel what about what y'all have on, at that position right now? Yeah. Uh well like from an offensive standpoint, like and he all, laughed too. So yeah, this is, we've this is already we're faced the best pitchers that we're going to gonna face all year <laughs> yeah. on a weekly basis. Right. You know, like we might face a Paul Skeens once or twice during the season, and I've faced him five times. Already. Right. You know, right. like How'd you do against him. Uh, I mean, he's gotten the best. Yeah, I mean, I, he's I've supposed got, to. He's got a time or two. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah, yeah. Time or two. But but I mean, like he goes up there every single time and like. You know, a problem. He, does, he does his thing. He's a problem. But it's it. like when he's getting everyone now, it's like, oh, this is going to be sweet when I'm playing sports. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just super exciting to see because you know that we're both getting better. Like there's times where the offense just kills it against whoever was pitching, you know. And it's like, okay, like we're hitting these guys. And yeah. then there's a day where the pitching just dominates. And it's like, you know, right. like they're going to do that for mm-hmm. us. Right. So for both ways, it helps us. Like offensively, we're getting better because we're facing the best pitching in the country, basically. Yep. And then our pitching staff is going to face the best lineup in the country all the time. So I think as we play our scrimmages, it's like we're hungrier and hungrier to play other teams, but we still don't know, like, what that is even going to look like. Because you have two basically, like, loaded rosters playing against each other every single weekend. It's like, how good really are we? Yeah. You know? Like, we know that we're good, but we won't know until we're playing against other teams. Right. When everyone's on the same side. Because at the end of the day – you can be the best team in the world, a la Tennessee last year, mm-hmm. and not go to Omaha, and then it doesn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. You may They may have been the most talented team in baseball, but they didn't go out there and win it. So at the end of the day, you know that when you go out there, like, we got to go out there and we got to go out and win. That's yeah. just that's that's what it is about, right? Mm-hmm. For me, whenever I was at LSU, we got there as, I got there as a freshman. Mm-hmm. It was cool to see and the guys that came in my class, like, develop together, right? So – you got there as a, as a freshman. Yeah. You've obviously developed as a player, and you've gotten better and better and better. Mm-hmm. But you got to see some of the guys that you came in there as freshmen who probably maybe couldn't make their hundreds or make their sprints or do these types of things, and then they've you know kind of matured and understand it, right? And you see guys who came in here with a lot of talent. So I guess the whole point of asking this is you had Ty Floyd coming as a freshman, mm-hmm. right? And Ty Floyd had a lot of talent. He was a mm-hmm. guy who was supposed to be a guy. Yeah. But – you know, for some reason or another, like he had some flashes, but never really like consistently clicked. Mm. And you saw it towards the end of last year, click. Yeah. And then I'm a I'm assuming that I mean he's probably throwing 97, 98 right now, and like he's got a nasty change up. Yeah. And like, how cool has it been to see him make that make that jump? And what have you seen from him on the mound yeah. right now? Dude, it's been awesome because I've known Ty since like the junior summer, going into my senior year, doing like the perfect game events, right. whatever it is, like. So I've known a lot of players that are on this team already just from doing stuff like that. And he was pitching. I was like, damn, this guy, so he was good. He was already throwing 95 and stuff like right. that. And then you go to now where it's like, okay, he's throwing 
95 to 98 sometimes with that. That ride. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that ride. <laughs> and, the then, IVB and then he's flipping it, in yeah. that curveball, and now he's got a change up. It's like, okay, like from our freshman year, he was throwing a lot of fastballs and not as much of the curveball or maybe not landing the curveball as right. consistent, consistently. And now it's like, yo. So people don't really talk about him much, right? Mm-hmm. I think he got gets forgotten. Is he probably maybe going to start in the rotation? Like I have no idea. I mean, idea. I know you don't yeah. know, but like – I would imagine that mm-hmm. he has some he has starts under his belt. Yeah. He would be a guy that I feel like Jay would want in there. I know Jay's talked very highly about him, mm-hmm. so I just don't understand why people forget about him because yeah. he's that nasty. He's got three yeah, plus no, pitchers. Yeah. Um, like I don't know what his role is going to be, but I know whenever he's going to he have is, one. When he is in the game, like he's getting outs, he's going to strike guys out, he's going to get pop, guys yeah. to pop up, and he's just he's going to make guys look silly. And uh, I think it's cool because on the road, me and him were roommates last year. We lived nice. together. We like we lived together uh, like at our house here, but like we were always roommates on the road and stuff like that. So like I remember when he wasn't cops. Yeah, when he wasn't <laughs> pitching during the season, like just going through it every day, talking like he's getting better, but he hasn't gone in as much. And then all of a sudden, I think it was against Ole Miss. Yep. He pitched. He gave up a home run to Tim Elko, I think. But it's like other than that, he had a bunch of strikeouts. He threw, I think, five innings. Yeah. Like. No runs after that, and we ended up losing that game 5-3 because it was the one that came over from the night before. Yep, yep. But from that point on, it was like every start. You know, he's going five, six innings, getting a bunch of strikeouts. Guys like guys can hit him. Right. So it was really awesome to see, like, being with him on every road trip or whatever it was, like, hey, you're pitching tomorrow. Like, yeah. you're, you're, like I, me yeah. knowing he's going to do his thing. Yeah. You know, like, That's fun. Yeah, no, it's yeah. awesome. I, I love seeing him going out there because I know he's going to give us everything that we need. And transitioning from last year to this year, obviously the addition to Wes Johnson, have you been able to see the difference? That Obviously, transfer portal bringing yeah. a lot of guys that you haven't seen before, but mm-hmm. have you seen almost a different approach or maturation from the pitching staff as a whole from guys that you faced before? Yeah, I think the whole staff in, in general is throwing harder, way harder. And then like guys are able to mix their pitches in ways that they you weren't guys before. Knuckleball now. Exactly. Yeah. How is that? Uh, I, I don't think I've seen it. I haven't seen it, yeah. but I know he's he messes around and throws it every now and then. <laughs> but it's like uh, he's definitely don't be surprised. Yeah. He's definitely gonna pull it out the game. Yeah. Watch it. Coach West is really smart. He knows what he's doing with the pitchers. Yeah. You know, like we'll walk in uh, when we're hitting in the cages and they're working in the pitching lab, and I'll just sit in and watch guys throw for a minute or hear him talk, and it's like no, re- there's like. It's obvious why the guys are right. doing as good as they're doing, you know. Right. Um, but it's really cool because, like, he, he knows what he's doing for every hitter. Like, he knows how to get hitters out. Mm-hmm. So as long as our pitchers are going to execute the plan that he has set out, like, they're going to get guys out. Yeah. And the type of talent that we have and, like, the work and stuff that guys have put in, it's like we know that they're going to execute their pitches. Like, there's no doubt about that, right. like, in our heads at least. Right. So, I mean, it's just super awesome to see them go out there every single time. And it's like – pounding at the top of the zone, hitting the uh, the black on the edge, in and out, like whatever it is. It's like, that's a tough pitch to hit. Yep. You know? Yep. Like, no it's a strike, but it's not a hitter's pitch. Right. It's not you something know? you want to swing at. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I don't want to walk back to the dugout. Pitches. They're making those pitches. Yeah. So it's like, there's times like, yeah, I can just tip my hat. Yeah. Like, some, that's all no you can one do. else is doing that. Yeah. No one else is making that sure. pitch, you know? So For it's sure. like, if you're getting me out right now in an inner squad game, like, that's fine because I know when I'm playing shortstop in a month, like, I'm going to be laughing at the guys that no are doubt. walking back to the dugout. No yeah. doubt. No, Dude, it's awesome to see. I told you I wasn't going to keep you too long. I kept you longer than I wanted to keep you. I know you got stuff to do. I appreciate it. Just one more what question. Bro, he's on online classes. Yeah, but he's, he's got fine. actual quizzes he's got yeah, to do, man. Quizzes Come on, dude. Right. Shoot him up. What, what are we in? What's the major? Uh-huh. Uh, sports admin. Oh, yeah, I got those. Too. I got, our, got I'm those. sure they haven't yeah. changed in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you think he did those when he was here? Who's the teacher you like? Oh, D. Jacobs. D. Jacobson. She still teaches? Yeah, she does. I've had her in a She's great. She's great. You're the it's only just, person I said didn't like. It. Don't do that. Us. What? Don't do that. Very, I didn't do anything. Disrespect. <laughs> shout out to Jacobson. Me. Yeah. You probably, shout deserved, out you probably deserved to get failed. But he tried to. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, just try to graduate. Before we go, right? So Champions. obviously the the opening day is Friday. Mm-hmm. You know, for me it was like opening day. You start seeing the buzz, but then you yeah. don't really get that buzz again until SEC because yeah. then you start then it warms up. You start yeah. pe- see people tailgating. What is your favorite thing about? Pulling up to Alex Box, right? Like the anticipate, 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 anticipatory. I was gonna say that anticipation of the game of the season of a series. Like Fred. everybody has something. I mean, <laughs> that was post, you know. <laughs> that, but everybody has something that like makes them think about oh, LSU baseball. Or, like kind of yeah. gets you fired up, right? For me, it was like driving 
down Burbank and seeing everybody tailgating with the tents and the grills and then music out at two o'clock. Yeah. Right? Like for me that was it. Like is there something specific about LSU fans and coming up that makes you like, damn, all right, it's here. Nah, I think you hit it. I mean, like when you pull up to the field on a Friday for an SEC series against Arkansas or whatever it is, and Tennessee. there's fans <laughs> at at the stadium already doing stuff before you even get there like i'm i'm not even here for my early work yet and everyone's already right. out here ready to watch us play it's like all right like yeah, it's time to go fun. like yeah. it's fun like nobody nobody cares like that other than they do here in the sec and stuff like that like if i went to a game a college baseball game in california like there's gonna be 400 fans right you know there's <laughs> right. there's 1500 2000 people waiting outside before like we're even getting to the field. You know, we're getting 4,000, 5,000 people at a midweek game. Right. You know? Right. Like, so it, it, like, for it to mean that much, I mean, like, it means even more for us. I would like know? for I would like for them to figure out a way to have it a little bit more uh, rowdy in certain areas of the state. I know like, they got they got. We're working like, on that. We're look, we're trying to promote it on here. We're trying, we're trying we're trying to talk in the. They when need to have when they're getting rowdy in right field. You gotta let them get rowdy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When we go to Tennessee, they're not stopping that. They yeah. should. When we, like, I mean, they're look, not, they're not stopping that on here too. They're not stopping it anywhere else. They need to look at ECU. We can we can listen. We can nicely matriculate the little. kids. It's the different exactly. spot. Like, that should just be a student section. Well, yeah, exactly. It's the student section. Yeah. So, like, let them be students. Yeah. yeah. Let them right. be 20. You don't go years. sit in the football student section. When you go to the football student section, you know what you're going to get. You know what you're getting. Exactly. Right? Like, no, that should have They should you're have You're getting that. Lloyd. Yeah. Like, you're you're going to learn, yeah, <laughs> learn a new word today. You don't see kids <laughs> and parents go into the right view, uh, the berm and Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? They're no, not exactly, part of the beer showers, but that's awesome. Yeah. Right? And so. Oh, it is awesome. <laughs> we're, work, we're working on it. We're trying. I'm pushing for it. Now, I talk to Jay all the time. I'm like, Jay, you got to fig- we got to figure this thing out, mm-hmm. man. Because no, we like it when it gets rowdy like yeah. that. Cause, everyone does. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, well, because when we go on the road, it's like we're trying to get rowdy because yeah. that's when we play the best. Because right. then you have that like type of environment against you guys. It's like us against everyone here. Yep. So it's like when road dogs. When yeah, exactly. But when uh, the fans are getting rowdy, it's like okay, here yeah, we go. Yeah, they got it. Yep. Here I mean, we go. Like, I mean, they get what we got. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We yeah. talked about because everyone before. doesn't deal with it. Mm-mm. Right. That everyone doesn't deal with it. Right. Well, and that's also we talked about before on here. Like, there's been times where fans in Alex Box Stadium have won games for us. Mm-hmm. Right. Like we've been down six, seven runs in the seventh, eighth mm-hmm. inning, and the starter comes out. He maybe he dominated, and the guy in the pins on the field, and he's throwing a couple balls, and he gets worn out by mm-hmm. the fans. And now he shits the bed when he comes in the game, and the game's over. We end up winning. Yeah. And I firmly believe that the crowd oh, 100%. does that. And so you need to have that. And I wish they hope that they figure out a way yeah. to do. It. I know Jay's got a bunch of improvements. He wants to do the stadium. And I just that's one of them. Yeah. I think you got to figure they out. Know a spot. What to do. Yeah, we'll they do. Out. Get they do. Right. <laughs> uh, dude, I appreciate you, man. Wait, hold on. Is Crunk officially dead? We can't do any props. Crunk or? is not dead. What are we gonna do about Crunk that? Is not dead. Hey. Keep There's it in the surprises. Dougie. Ooh, oh, I like hey. it. Oh, you got some prizes. Yeah, yeah. to see what happens. I mean, I heard, I heard you're like extremely funny and you're personalized <laughs> A+. Plus. That's what I've heard. I heard like when they say funny guy, Jordan mm-hmm. Thompson. I'm at the top. top. <laughs> and I think it's not like, hey, I'm a jokester. I yeah, think yeah. it's just more your personality, yeah. right? Like yeah. you have it's the cool California. Just yeah. chill. Yeah. You know? You're from Cali, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. I can feel it. You just keep it quiet. Uh, yeah. so I like that. What's going on over here? You're not like fooling that. me. I like that. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen a lot of you. Okay, that's how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. It's yeah. for the boys. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Um, dude, I appreciate you, man. No, You're boys. awesome. We'll have you on again at some point throughout oh, yeah. the course sun of the year. Sundress season. Sure. Huh? Sundress season. I haven't talked about that. No, no. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. It's not there yet. <laughs> we got a couple months between it's that. Early, yeah, we'll get that and jean shorts. What is it? Probably? Crop tops. Crop top. Crop tops, jean shorts, Crop sundress. Top. That's coming yeah, in Not Friday night, now. though. No. After, no. after it's same... to be like 40 degrees, huh? Yeah. Uh, I'm Just a, hope the wind's I'll be watching on You'll be fine at the wind's I'm going to watch it on TV on Friday. I'll be there on Saturday, but I'll watch it on TV on Friday. You know? After St. Patty's Day is when you start seeing the... Yeah. The matriculation, yeah. like yeah. after March fifteenth. Yeah, go. oh, he's got there you go. Yeah, he there you go. That's that's <laughs> season <laughs> vet, baby. It starts heating yeah, up. The go. wind starts blowing straight there out. You go. Oh, there you go. Knows. He gets it. Yeah. Yeah. He just walk out. Oh, it's a great day to be a righty. Yeah, yeah. 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 everybody knows. You might that. be from Louisiana now. You everybody get it. Knows it. <laughs> uh, bro, I appreciate you. No, yeah, thank of you. Thanks for having um, me. Of course, anytime. And uh, looking forward to this this weekend. So, all right, we're gonna take a thirty second break. Get him out of here. So that we're not, you know, fumbling over the cameras and stuff. You're watching Mic'd Up. We'll be back in, I'll say a minute. But before we go into our break, 
I want to give a shout out to, like I said, we, we talk about us getting new partners, new sponsorships all the, all the time. We have a new sponsor, and you've probably seen them on the top left corner in the little uh, little spinner logo, Fco F- Solutions. Our friends on at Fco, they're out of Lafayette. They're a civil construction company. They specialize in new multifamily construction, right? If you don't know what civil engineering is, I mean, civil construction is, that's okay. Probably a lot of people don't understand it. They basically get the land ready to be built vertically, right? I'm giving you a little bit of a construction lesson here. I don't know much Crash about course. it. I've learned it. I've learned it on the go, right? They specialize in site drainage, site utilities, earthworks, site cleaning, house pads, ponds, demo work, and hurricane cleanup. So they do anything that involves dirt, basically, or the earth. And a lot of that gets done before it has to be done before you are building whatever development you are trying to build. So our friends at EFCO have been fans of the show. They are really, really good people. They are down there in Lafayette. If you know anybody from Lafayette, you do know me. Jay Mitch is from New Iberia. I'll consider that Lafayette's 337 area code. There you go. 337, 337 area code. They are unbelievable people. Um, they do a very, very, very good job, and they are committed to – growing and being the best at what they do. So I just want to give a shout out to our friends at EFCO. Um, I know that they listen. Appreciate you guys. We are going to be great partnerships. seven o'clock hour if you just tuned in and you missed the jordan thompson interview it's okay we recorded it it's gonna be posted you missed a lot of good stuff though like you can go back and rewind it right now and go listen to it because he was a little he was open and honest about his struggles last year how he got through him what he did by looking at him watching him on the field and just kind of knowing his personality a little bit he he, he did it in extremely the way that i thought that he would have hey. got through it like he's very uh that's why I think he's such he's poised for such a big season is because of what he had to go through yeah. last year, knowing he wasn't healthy but still grinding it out. You, you watch the conversation, you see, you'll see why Jay has so much confidence in him and why we've kind of like off air talked about we think he's going to have a great year yeah. this year. Yeah, and look, he's uh, he, I mean, he talks about how close the team is and yeah. you kind of see that and you kind of feel that. and I mean, they've got – they're so deep. Like, don't be surprised if you see some freshmen that we haven't – people haven't talked about a lot play a lot earlier than you think right yep. um just because that's how deep they are and, and how good they are but it's a good problem to have listen all of you that sent in questions to ask jordan i appreciate it i didn't name you out personally but we asked all the questions that you wanted we just asked them in just in conversation um so i appreciate that speaking of questions it is wednesday and but because it's wednesday we have ask mikey and mitch segment today um you want to do that now I'm a, I just I just put it in the chat. So okay, I'm so get, give get him some rolling. Time. So if you want to do, get into a seggy, and then as soon as the question starts rolling in, we'll pivot. Um, all right. What do you uh? Mistake of the day. No, we don't have to go right to the seggies yet. Actually, let's go. Let's, let's let's break it up. Mistake of the day. Let's start doing that because I like to have one segment do something, another segment do something, another. Do you know what I mean? Um, you got one. Mistake of the day is brought to you by our friends at Dozy Place. Is it too late? I wouldn't call it a mistake, but my guy. Jesus, this camera's a mistake of the day. We need to get that figured out. My guy at the waste management that had a time brought the mullet back. No, you already talked about it. Already that. did that one? Yeah, you did that one already. Okay, give me a second. That was your curtain call, actually. Day. Yeah. Sorry, I, we had the team meeting, and that's usually when I do the document. Yeah. So I was okay, trying to okay, do well both. Okay, I'll, I'll put you out there. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. You know. Uh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about the Saints? I mean, we can talk about the Saints. Baker I don't know. Mayfield? No, we don't need to talk about Baker. 
Because I don't think Baker's going to be the guy. Yeah, I feel like the more we bring that up, like the more we're kind of speaking that into existence, and I would like for that not to happen. So let's just go ahead and act like they're not on this trail at all. Sorry, Baker. What if they do sign him? Because be you upset. saw you saw what happened. The Saints obviously made some cap moves. They transitioned Robert May. Robert May. Marcus May. Marcus May. Who's Robert May? Seems like a uh, maybe a basketball player. Um, Marcus May. They saw him transition his salary into a full bonus, to where they're clearing some cap rooms. So Four and a half million to clear from him. I think they're gonna. They have a bunch of people. What I read yesterday is they have the ability to clear enough cap room, get away below the cap without having to release anybody. Right now. They still may release. Obviously, you still have Jameis on the books, and you still have Michael Thomas on the books. Those two guys are obviously candidates. If, if Michael Thomas doesn't want to be here anymore to be released, to clear up a lot more cap space. Um, I don't know if they're going to do that or not, but in the article, it was, or in the tweet, it was they have the ability to, you know, they're doing what the Saints do. Like, they are the best at the in the business at manipulating the cap and allowing them to, you know, fill the holes with with talented free agents and, and all of that so listen it's all it all it's, it's all dependent upon the quarterback but I think that with the ability to go out there and clear the cap and have some pieces in place I think you get a solid quarterback in place like you get Derek Carr there I think that you have the ability to go out there and, and you're still an attractive place for free agents to come because you can sell the hey we are in the NFC South, we have the ability to go out there and win the division. And you come in here, and we're not going to be an average team. You come in here, we have the ability to be above average team. We have a quarterback who we believe in, who's experienced, he's done it. He's had some success, been in the Pro Bowl. I think that'll help. I 100% agree. I uh, let's, let's be honest. The New, oh, Orleans, yeah. the New Orleans atmosphere, the roster they already have put together, right now seems like it is a quarterback shy of a real contending now, type of team. Now, a quarterback shy and an offensive scheme. He need, I mean, he needs to change up his offensive scheme, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you just need good quarterback play yeah, and a maybe. healthy team. And maybe that's the case. You know, yeah. you didn't have Michael Thomas again last year. We right. saw what not having Kamara Michael Thomas hurt. for and, uh, the yeah. you know previous couple years did too. So, I, you know, I think – with that team that they have, it's really hard to see the to sit there and look at it and say, "Yeah, this team can't contend," especially in the NFC South and what it's been the last year, well, last year ish, last two years, right? Yeah. So I think you know you get somebody in like Derek Carr, who I personally think if they could get if they can land Derek Carr, I really do think it's a win, right? Because I think him in the right situation, him with pieces around him, him with a really good defense, is something that I don't think they consistently had at all. In Oakland, while he was there, I think you you have a team that can actually really really compete and towards the top of that division. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, you have you just you have a lot of opportunity to be really good. Now we talk about the NFC South being down. You have a lot of people in free agency that can turn the NFC South from being not very good to being good in a heartbeat, right? Like. You look at, there was a tweet out the other day, I remember today I saw it, where some of these, I think Bleacher Report does it or someone, it was where where do they expect some of these big high-end free agents to yeah. go? And Lamar Jackson was at, going to Atlanta, right? right? Like, that would be a problem. If Lamar said. Jackson goes to Atlanta, That's also, now all of a sudden they're an issue, right? Because the, be with the way they like to run the football, Not like to, Arthur the way Smith, they, like they do run the football, football. like yeah. that offense, like that, I mean, he is, he's Desmond Ritter times a million. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they drafted Desmond Ritter to do. Now you have a guy who's actually done it. He's an MVP type of guy. Now, I don't know if he's going to go there, right? I mean, Lloyd, you mentioned the franchise tag. Like, I guess they could franchise him, but have they already franchised him? No. Who? They haven't franchised Lamar at all, right? We haven't, we haven't reached that date yet, no. No, but, like, in his career. Like, no, last no, no, year, no, no, Last no, year was the last no. year of his deal. No. Or this year was the last year of his deal, right? Um, yeah, so yeah. they could technically franchise him, which that would suck. For him, yeah. I mean, that's why the that's why the conversations of contracts come up. They always come up through the last year you did. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, things can happen, right? Like, there's a, there's going to be a lot of shakeup in the league. You know, obviously, offense is the thing that everybody wants. But I think this year, 
you started to see a lot of the defense I think kind of take you know not take over, but like yeah, but kind of you know start, how it is too. Like it's the NFL and the NBA free agency over the past few years have gotten to be wild rides, and I think we're probably in for another one. So we'll see how the how the how the, uh, the chips shake out and everything. Like we everyone's so keen and so and so on saying that Aaron Rodgers is done in Green Bay and he's for sure going to the Jets. I don't know that. Well, Aaron Rodgers came out and said. Nobody knows shit about yeah, it. Yeah, we don't know that. Yeah. Who, like, who knows where he may end up? You know yeah. what I mean? And that could be a big shakeup. No one knows where Jimmy Garoppolo is going. Like, there's some big names out there who are going to be available. It'll be interesting to see how it kind of starts to play out. But the first chip has fallen, which is a Derek Carr. Yeah. Getting released. And, I mean, I, look, I think he's going to make the decision pretty here pretty soon. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a long deal. The only team that he ever, even ever met with yeah. before he got released. We mentioned released, that too. Like he, if they gave him permission to go and meet with the Saints, I'm sure they probably gave him position. To, I mean, uh, permission. And if to he go meet yeah, with if he teams. said I want to go meet with them, right. that's the only team that he was really interested right, in, right. right? So I think that's a that's a, an opportunity. NFL ended, Super Bowl ended, post Super Bowl. Last couple of days of the Super Bowl, the NBA. I mean, the NFL Twitter turned into the NBA Twitter. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going to speak about it. Okay. Yeah, All right. I'll do it. All right. I'm holding All right, on. and I have my... Mistake of the day brought to you by our friends at Dozy Place. Dozy Place. Hold on, let me pull up. because My friend Scott it's, was able to come to my house Super Bowl Sunday and brought us some nice little ground beef from Doze. Yeah, it would have been a great hamburgers. opportunity to promote it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... Uh, you know, That's I, I an respect, actual mistake. I respect the, the privacy <laughs> of my family that was there that didn't want to be on camera. You don't think, know that. I think Lloyd's making this his mistake of the day. <laughs> no, no. Mine is... And it's not... I wouldn't even call it a mistake. But I'm going to call it a mistake because we all sent this man around. And I don't know what was going on with the Golden State Warriors game, but this man was struggling with the glasses and what he had to do. And I don't know what he's looking at. I don't know what he needs them for, but he's making, this guy's me, tripping out, dude. He's making me nervous. So the mistake of the day would be, what drugs did you take? You know what that reminds me of? He, over, he, uh, he overshot the gummies, it seems like. It you might, you want to know or then he goes for the beer chunk at the end. He's like, I'm not in my right mind. I don't know what to do. So I don't know if he's using these to be able to look up at the screen. Then he sees himself up there. Then he gets kind of like an itchy head. So he sees it. I then, mean, like, obviously he's paying primo dollars for those seats. You ever go You ever go to the movies and it's <laughs> one of those? <laughs> listen, you ever go to the movies and it's one of those movies they give you the little 3D glasses and this and that. And then next thing you know, you're sitting in there and you find yourself being like, what's this look like? You think he thought that's where he was at? Maybe, maybe he think that's what those are. Look, thought, I got these blue blockers on right here. <laughs> He was, I think he was he, actually watching the game in 3D, but he thought it should have been a different type of 3D. Yeah, boy, the be, it wasn't the, just the glasses if he saw it in 3D, I can tell you that. I mean, the best part is it, if you've ever been in like an uncomfortable situation, it's clearly on the screen. I don't know who's behind him. Um, Gary Payton Jr. Okay, so that's who they're trying to focus on, and he thinks it's him for some reason. So he's looking up at the screen. I think that's why he has the hater blockers, so he can block out like the blue light. It's the second. Gary Payton's second. I said the third. He said junior, I think. What's the difference? Uh, there's difference. GP's there. GP something. Yeah, GP. There you go. GP the, yeah. GP the little glove. Yeah. The, the, the mitten. <laughs> mini glove. The, the mitten. mitten. <laughs> the mitten. <laughs> but he does the ultimate Training move at the, at, the end, <laughs> at the end where you feel like you're uncomfortable and you don't know what to do, so he just reaches for a beer. He's like, all right, <laughs> I'm just going to – this is the most normal thing I can do in this situation. If you've ever been caught out on hallucinogens or any sort of drug and you feel like the spotlight's on you – just take a drink. I have not done that. I don't know what he was caught oh, out on, but he was definitely caught in 4K right there. Well, 100%. Yeah. I mean, we went to a birthday party at Shady's one day where the band was playing and my buddy made us go and we had already, you know, consumed some... Some things. Some things. Hallucinogens. And it's like, Oxygen. the bar sounds like an awful idea. We went anyway, and we're standing right next to the guy that they're singing happy birthday to, so it kind of felt like they were singing happy birthday to us. But when you looked around, you're like, this isn't for us at all. Like, we're just in the wrong spot. And that's when we decided, it's time to tuck tail and we'll skedaddle out of here. I did got, I got caught up in, like, a bunch of 2000, it was probably, like, what, 2014, like, LSU football talk. I could navigate my way through that. 2014? No. Shady's are shut down before then. No. I was there for, my buddy worked there. I know, but the Shady's got shut down, like, pretty soon after George Jefferson stuff, right? George yeah, so Jefferson was a senior in 2012. So it might have been like 2012, 2013. That's what, that was our heyday. It was when, yeah, it was 2013 because that's when the Heat was on their run. And we would always go there after the game. But I miss, yeah. I missed a good Shady's time. Shady's got a good time. But yeah, we were singing happy birthday. I'm like, this ain't for us, dog. It's time for us to 
Yeah, Diggity bounce. That night, oh, absolutely. Once I got home. <laughs> Uh, not my safe space. Uh, you know it's not good when a whole group of dudes think the happy birthdays to all of them. Not yeah, just, just standing right next to this. We man. all came out together. We all got the same birthday. Yeah, it's all for us. <laughs> so that's my mistake of the day. Okay, I like man. that. Get get your you know. There's a there's a fine line you can walk. You just got to get your meds yeah, right. You got you have got to find the right combo because he's peaking. Yep, he's he tough. He tough. He was tough for him. Um, all right, let's do the ask Mikey and Mitch segment. Let's just start it. We have some questions already in the. Uh, Cute. In the document, in the queue, and I'm sure that as we go, some people ask questions. That's you know, how it starts rolling. Yeah, you know, when you're in class, hey, anybody have questions? Nobody has a question until somebody asks a question, then all of a sudden everybody's got a bunch of questions. Roll them out, Lord. Nobody what wants to be got? the first. So, um, Ask Mikey and Mitch segments brought to you by our friends at EFCO. EFCO is a civil development company. EFCO Development is a civil construction company specializes in new multifamily construction specialized in site drainage site utilities earthwork site clearing house pads ponds demo work and hurricane cleanup so anything that has involves with the dirt and the earth they are your people they are based out of lafayette if you're interested and you have a project and you need you want someone to do high quality work call these guys call call our friend title of the day at 318-229-5585 Again, the number is 318-229-5585. Contrary to what Lloyd believes, there's not a ton of math. I'm sure there's a little bit of stuff that goes into it, but you don't need to be a mathematician like Matt, like Lloyd thought you had to do. Uh, again, it, it is uh, Evco Development is a civil construction company. They do really good work. They're based out of Lafayette, but they do work all around the state. Go ahead, give these guys a call if you have a project for them. All right. Ask Mikey and Mitch Segge. Segge. First uh, one up. Yep. Hunter Fournette, good to see you again. Oh, he's ready. Ask Eminem, which I kind of like. Do you think you can beat Jerry Eminem. Jones in an arm wrestling match? The first one that came up, so I snagged it. Oh, so you're going straight from the chat? Yes. Okay. Oh, do you have? Do we have some? In we the have eight? some in the doc. I just got. I went down oh, there. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll read those. Um, yeah. So can I beat him in arm wrestling? Probably not. I would imagine not. I'm not a good. Uh... It's all about leverage. Game time only. It's all no, about leverage. Like I feel like I, would, I feel like my my elbow would snap. Yeah, my elbow's not meant for arm wrestling. Yeah, I'm like I can get a stalemate. I think I can if I get like if I get it, but then like when I'm done, I release it. Oh, my elbow <laughs> hurt. I already know. <laughs> um, oh I, man, I went to Galatoire's one time. I love Galatoire's. And it was the one in New Orleans, obviously. The one in Baton Rouge shut down, unfortunately. But I have video. It was one of the founders. This might out me actually. I feel like statute of limitations has passed. One of the founders of PayPal was in there, and they took over the entire restaurant. They challenged the GM to an arm wrestling match, and this guy pulls off his sports coat. The guy that challenged him, one of the PayPal guys, yeah. pythons. And the, the GM was like, oh, this never mind. Like This is going to be fun. I'm like, no, 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 come down. They were buying magnum bottles of champagne for the entire room. It was insane. They line up on the table, put elbow and elbow down, and this guy proceeds to snap his arm like in front of the GM. Probably, yeah, the GM gets his arm snapped in front of probably 250 people. And then they have to clear out the entire restaurant. They try to take people's phones. I was like, I didn't see anything, but I still have it. it you have it on your phone? Oh, yeah. This guy looks wow. like Cristiano Ronaldo. It's insane. Like, he pulls well, off Cristiano the floor. Cristiano Ronaldo's not like, doesn't have pipe No, lines. Oh, man, he's cut. And this guy's <laughs> a GM at Galatoire's. What do you think he looks like? He's just a normal right, guy. Right. And Damn, they tried sucks. to go around and get our phones. And I was like, I didn't see anything. And I just kept it on my phone. I still have it. It's one of wow. the... The things has made it through the the Rolodex. But, you mean wow. to tell me I'll, they? You mean to tell me they couldn't point out that the guy in the corner with the mustache and the mullet had his phone out, video in this thing? How long ago is this? This was probably like five, six years ago. So you, I have, like, you had the iPhone at the time. Yeah, I had the iPhone, but I didn't have the look. So I was just uh, I had the you know the <laughs> oh, fraternity you cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. know any better? Yeah, he had the short hair. Oh, like, yeah, hey, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. a schemer guy. Okay, you know, okay. what I mean, okay. like you don't know that I'm mischievous, but I'm very mischievous. I can I work for know. PayPal. I'm, I'm up to no good, but yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, right. All right, so I'm as, more impressed that you actually were there. Did you have a jacket on that night? Yeah, they you gotta have one. a jacket, but they also have. That's why I'm yeah, asking. I yeah. wanted them to say yes. I, I did. I do. I have three. I have three sports coats. I just don't. I'm have not saying you don't have any. Is do you wear them? Yeah, I hate them. <laughs> I love them. Straight. Do you wear them? That's the difference. But to dinner, you just take them off. Like they're, you know, you don't want to eat in that. Right. You just hang it over the back of the chair. Or they put it in. Coat yeah, they check. take it to coat check. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Ask Mikey and Mitch. First one up. Jason Dorsey. What do you think about LSU? At Tiger Den LSU. Give them the, At Tiger Den LSU. Yeah, yeah, See, I can't take these and put these into the chat the way yeah, I can right. the other ones. Right. Um, but from Tiger to LSU, Jason Dorsey, what do you think about LSU's bullpen going into the season? Electric. Especially uh, with, obviously, this comes deep. on the heels yeah. of 
the injury to Grant Taylor. I don't know where he would have fit in. It maybe have been a starter. I'm glad we didn't really put him on the spot about I that. Have asked yeah, that. me yeah. either. Um, which is good. Even if I knew that, yeah, good feel. Good feel. Yeah. Um, so, where do you think LSU's bullpen goes I think into the season? Gonna, I think it's going to be elite. I think that they have too many arms on the team for it not to be. And too many high-level arms on the team for it not to be. I think that um, they have the ability to go left-right matchups. They have a few lefties on the team now where they can say, "Hey, you know what? We we trust you. We're going to put you out there." And so, I think that it's going to be extremely deep, and I think that it's going to be extremely talented. Like. JT was saying on, on the show, he's like, everybody's throwing harder. This is the hardest they've thrown. Like, everybody has improved velocity-wise. And I think with West, you're going to see a lot of guys be able to come in there and, and throw. Um, well, you're going to see them on the pitch, too. Right? Yeah. Like, not just throw with velocity. Actually learn, you know, how to pitch, too. I think um, to start this year, I think you're going to be looking at a not only the bullpen, but the pitching staff, where I think it's fair to say that may have been the weakness of the team last year. I think you're gonna, with it's crazy to say it because of what you know is on the offensive side of the this thing. I think it's gonna be very, very, very strong that the pitching staff as a whole might end up being the strength of the team at the end of the year. Yep, that's what I that's what I think you're gonna see. I agree. And you, you know, he alluded to it a little bit as we asked him the question, and the first thing he did was laugh. It kind of tells you a lot about what he thinks and they think about their pitching staff. All right, here's one from the tube. Fonz for Fonzarelli. Hey, ask him. M&M. I do like to ask him and him. Me too. Maybe that should be the. Uh, I think that might be it. Thank you, it. Chad. Thank you. Thank you to the clubbies. Fonz Fonzarelli. If you could go back in Fonzie. time, what would you want? Would you want to have the game-winning hit in the College World Series or MLB World uh, Series? I mean, can we go both? No. <sighs> Says who? Me. That's the, them's the rule. Honestly, he gave you not he honestly. Didn't say if and. I had to be honest with you, <laughs> Major League Baseball World Series. If I could go back, if I could be in the, in the MLB World Series and get the game-winning hit, the game seven of, or to, to clinch it, like, of, like, that's in, like, history books always. I would say, give me, I would want the game-winning hit in the... I mean, you kind of had it. I would want the game-winning hit in the Major League World I Series, and I would still love to have been part of a college World Series. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't there need the go. game. I don't, I don't need, need the that one. Hit. Right. Yeah. But, but the game-winning, that's, you know... I take that one. That's what, that's how I would go with it. I think Warren kind of set the precedent for what you can do with the College World Series. That hit. wasn't just a game-winning hit. That was, no, was like that was as home ultimate run. as ultimate. That, you they've never get. had yeah. that again. It's only yeah. there's been that's one. I'm saying there's only been one. But that's yeah, not just a game-winning game hit. hit. That's not he just a game-winning hit. Yeah. No, what hit can be a home run? Yeah, I know that. It can but be, but when he says game-winning hit, that means that could also happen in the seventh inning. Who had the <laughs> like? That's yeah, that's true. Who had it in the? Who was game one that had the the big hit? I had the game winning hit in the left. Hanging breaker. Mike no, no, the, the in the ninth. DJ hit the DJ double. Hit the DJ hit the double to tie the game. Yeah. And then you had. And then I had the, the top of the eleventh, two outs, base hit to tie the game. Yeah. Or to, to take. How the are game. you feeling in the box? Not very good. <laughs> uh, that was a struggle. That was a struggle. If you go game. back, if you go back and watch it, you could tell he was trying to be so damn simple. He was like, right, he got his foot down so early. That yeah, was my swing, but I didn't even earlier. There. I had, I had. So my first at bat. And I was having a great World Series. Like, we call J. Mitch Mop. That's our nickname in the group because he's the most outstanding player in the World Series. That was his thing. Like, at the before the World Series, before the three game series started, there's probably four guys or five guys on our team that were probably in contention. I was hitting 400 plus in the World Series. I was having a great World Series. So I'm going there. I'm like, damn, I feel good, right? First at bat, strikeout. <laughs> Second at bat, strikeout. It's all sliders, dude. This guy was killing me <laughs> for this slider. Hey, Mikey, his freshman year, he didn't like the slider. No, did not like it. He, <laughs> he did not like, like the, the slider. slider. Third at bat, slider, strike three. 0 for three, three punchies. I'm playing center field. I made a couple plays out in center field. So like I made my game. I actually had to get an IV. It was so freaking I saw, hot. I noticed that. I had to get oh, an yeah. IV. It was hot. It was a hundred. It was one of the so hottest. The only place I've ever had to get an IV was in yeah. Omaha. So I got an IV. I come back out. My next at bat, fourth at bat. Double play, right? Feeling yeah. great at the dish. Decent, decently hit, <laughs> but like two hopper, hard to the second baseman, no shot, beating it out. I'm like, how hard were you running out the box? I mean, it's one of those things you see it, and you're like, I'm out. Like, there's no way, but like, I'm not lollygagging, but yeah. like, I know there's but no I'm way out. beating out. Yeah. Unless he throws the ball in the stands. Fifth at bat, because now we have, we're going through it, right? So I had the opportunity in the 10th inning, I think. Um, <laughs> The guy throws me a pitch on the literally the other batter's box. 
Chase. I ass out yeah. here. Just a seeing eye single in the in the down in the four hole, like right past first base. I'm like, oh hey, got a hit, got a hit. So I feel it. So then get to the eleventh inning, and Brandon Workman, who's pit, you pitched in the big leagues for a really long time, was closing. And Brandon Workman was throwing 97, 98 miles an hour. And I'm not joking when I tell you that guys in the dugout were ducking because I was going right over the first base dugout, <laughs> like three straight times, fastballs, just way late. <laughs> So he throws I, a breaking ball, and I spit on it. I don't chase it. Nasty one. Big 12-6. I'm thinking to myself, like, all right, I got to get ready for the heater. Like, get ready for the heater. And this dude throws me another breaking ball, and Mikey's it stays foot was, up. When he did this, uh, foot was down. Foot was down. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he went like this. Workman went like this. Mikey's yep. foot was down. Yep. And he spun back. it. And it, like, it wasn't necessarily like a hanger hanger, but, like, it, it stayed up in the strike zone. Like, it didn't fall out the zone. Yeah. Base up the middle, single. I'm like, let's go. So I ended up having went from a miserable game to a really good game, and that's kind of how it was. It's so funny too, because like from a hitter's perspective, and this is something I guarantee you, he didn't know then, I didn't know then, but you just start learning it as you like go through, you play, right? Unless somebody who has played a whole bunch is able to tell you this before. But as a hitter, I think like a lot of pitchers think like, hey, I've thrown him three hitter heaters in a row, and he's fouled them off, and so they think, all right, now let me trick him. No, dog. Hey, he's fouled off three heaters in a row because he's not on it. Right. Keep throwing it to him. If I was he just told you, like, right there. He was like, he was throwing so hard, and I had no chance. I'm getting down early, and I'm still shooting it over the dugout. If, so why flip this? If he could go back and do it all over again, and he threw most fastballs, and I would go, and then he throws me the, the curveball down the dirt because it wasn't full count, right? right. Throws me a curveball down the dirt, and I spit on it. I would go elevated heater at yeah. that point. If I don't swing through it, then I would bring out the breaking yeah. ball again. That's it's like it's like understanding too, like, hey, all these heaters get, get fouled off. All right, if I'm gonna throw this, I need to understand that I can't hang it for a strike. Yeah. Because that's the one he's gonna be able to hit it. If I have to be I have like full confidence that I could bounce this and that my, my catcher can keep it in front of him, and then I can go back to the heater. Because if I don't do that, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. And listen, coach. Because what happens, they try to throw the nasty one, like the really nasty one, yeah, and that ends up being the hang. Up. Yep. And listen. My freshman year, I was not scared to strike out. Like, I, I well, was scared of swinging. I think my whole career, miss, I wasn't. Right? So I wasn't scared of swinging. Miss. And so, you know, whatever. But it worked out. All right, next question. Simple one here. Whiskey or beer? Brought to you by a guy, Michael Scott. Let me send it on in. We know uh, his, I know his answer. I'm whiskey. Tequila. All of the above. I mean, I'm not a big beer guy. I'm not a big beer guy at all either. Tequila, big but I will drink. Guy. I will drink the Heineken Silvers. Big Heineken guy. A big Heineken guy. Um, all right, let's. We have Alex, one more. Well, oh, you, you got you chat. Would... I was gonna. We have like five on here. So all right, yeah, go, dude. Ra you would rally through them. Yeah, I was gonna alternate back and forth. Okay. Um, from Alex Day at Radio Man Day M A N D A Y, on Twitter. Do you think Chase Shore starts the season in, in the weekend rotation, or do you see him coming off? Maybe in the bullpen. I think that I see him coming out the bullpen early on in the year. I I lean towards that, hundred percent. Especially now that yeah, no, I one hundred percent lean out. towards it. But then I also won't be, I guess, very surprised if he throws if he starts Sunday. No, right. But I I, I think it's gonna be. Out and the my bullpen. thought my thought process is, hey, let's get him eased into this, right? Right, and let him go, let him go, let him go, and like earn it, like right. just gradually get in, put into the rotation. Like, oh, you're, you're, we yeah. can't keep you out anymore. Right. But I, but I think it's pretty obvious just by how you know how much Jay would talk about him and or kind of like not want to talk too much about him. He's gonna have a big role. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, going back and forth. Fonz really is in here, boys. Okay, Fonzie. Ask him and him. What would it take? Would, could you figure out a pitcher's tells, and how could you notice is essentially what he's asking. Like, um, when did you figure out you picked up pitches? I feel like it's, you, it was contingent a lot on tipping, tipping, tip, tipping pitches. Tip, yeah. yeah, from a pitcher. I so, feel like you got a lot Some from, people are really good at that, and some people are not. Yeah, dude, I but. wasn't that great at it. Yeah. Um, but if somebody pointed it out to me, I, I could see it, yeah. right? Now, some of them, like, there was guys that would point stuff out to me. I'm like, what? Yeah. Where do you see that? Like, my example was when I was I was playing when I was in Detroit. Our first base coach was Omar, Omar Vizquel, mm. and Omar was very savvy and he could see kind of this kind of stuff. He was our first base coach, and he told me, he said, like, "Hey, if you get on first base, it was uh, Jose Quintana was the pitcher, so lefty." He goes, "When you get on first base, 
Quintana tips if he's going home or coming to uh, first. I'm like, okay, what does he do? He's like, look, if he goes home, his toe, his big toe is on the ground. Like it, it goes forward because he's pushing off to go forward. If he's coming to first, he picks his big toe off. By, by the way, just in case, just a little baseball lesson for everyone. If a lefty has a good move to first, 99.9% .9 of the time, that is what you're gonna find. That's the first thing you can find to tell if he's going to be coming to first or not. So like that's a right. So but the problem is, I couldn't fucking see it. <laughs> that was the problem. So I'm on first base. I'm like, <laughs> and I had just gotten come called back up. Like it was 18, so I was struggling. I I had three hits this day. I was feeling myself. Not trying to get thrown out. Not trying to get thrown out. So or I'm sitting off. there and I'm like, all right, all right. You know what? I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna take it. I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't move. I don't see anything. Picks over. I don't move. See I did the whole Chad Jones. <laughs> <laughs> you got to dive back. Yeah. Didn't dive back. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I get in the rundown. I come back. And Omar's like, what the hell? I'm like, Omar, I didn't see anything. So I walked back in there and they asked me what was going on. I was like, listen, I was trying to look at a, a tell. Obviously, I can't say it. I'm sorry. I have no excuse. That's my bad. So, yes. If somebody saw it and it was an obvious tell, I could you could pick it up. But I wasn't very good at the, the subtle things. Now, if the guy, <laughs> there's a guy who played, he pitches in the end, Karen Check is his name. He's our closer for the Indians, or reliever for the Indians, so it's really hard, nasty. He's like very spastic. He used to literally, when he was in AAA, <laughs> he would get on the mound and he was like almost Tourette's-esque, right? He'd go. And if he would do that, it was a fastball. And if he would go, breaking ball like that obvious so I'm, I'm glad you brought it up that way because I, I got to a point to where it was I only wanted to know the ones that you can see before they actually start their yeah. delivery right so if it was a heater glove stays closed or breaking ball glove flares open or finger or finger stays say, uh, still those type of things I wanted to see some guys were good enough to do this stuff where they're still seeing stuff when the legs in the air and the, right. the gloves separate. I'm like, dude, I'm out on that yeah, at I that point. Yeah. I'm trying to find a release point. So like, I, if if it was those guys, I didn't want to know it at all because it wasn't gonna help me at all. I, I'm no. But if it was stuff that was like before they actually started their delivery, then those are the ones I kind of wanted to know. Yep. Um, all right. So the next one on the on the dock. You got that? Yes. Um, even with Taylor's injury. Would you pick LSU or the field to win the College World Series and tell JT we're all pulling from? Obviously, kid's going to bounce back in a big way this year. I feel like that's going to be pretty apparent. Yeah, I, th I think you're going to see that. I think he's going to change the perception of the guys, people that for some reason had money know. year. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, even with Taylor's injury, I still would pick LSU to, to win the World Series. You know, obviously, it's very, it's a very, no matter how good you are, it's extremely hard to win a national championship. Like that's just baseball, especially in baseball, it's extremely tough. But you know, going into the season. Taylor being out sucks, for sure. No doubt about it, big loss. But I think if there was a year for this to happen, this year with the depth and the guys they have on the mound, like if, if, if he was a starter last year as a starter and we were counting on him, it'd be a different story because he was the guy that they needed to count on last year if, you know, going into the season. Now, with the guys they have on the roster and the rotation, I think that they can pick up the slack and it's going to give an opportunity for some of these young guys to step up a little bit earlier. Unbiasedly, I would still pick LSU over the field. Yeah. And it's because I know how deep this roster is. And my second reason as to saying this as well is you're looking at a roster who is not like, when I say deep, it's not, hey, we had the number one recruiting class that came in and now you really may be super talented, but you're young, asking yeah. young kids to, to basically man the ship. You got a lot of guys who put in a lot of innings in college baseball and have a lot of experience and they're super deep. I think that bodes well for if you can gel together, you being able to do what you need to do that when the stakes are the highest. So that's why for the for me, why I would say I would pick them over the field. It's not just because of how talented they are, but it's because of the experience that's also in that clubhouse. Yep. Great hundred percent. Okay, now going back to the vmix social which allows people to put this on the screen another one from old Fonz. send ask him and him Fonz is ready who from baseball history do you want to sit down with for dinner only one player or person 
Mickey Mantle. That was going to be my answer. Uh, Nails. Mickey Mantle, huh? I mean, if you yeah, saw, like, the, if you saw the letter he wrote. No, I did. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I had a bad groin, Coach. Honestly, Mickey Mantle, Daryl Strawberry would probably God, that's what I was going with <laughs> Only reason is because, yeah, I was the literally cocaine. going Daryl Strawberry. No, that's honestly. not it. Just I've also heard stories about It's so that. funny you say that because I was like thinking, I'm like, man, this the story, the, the piece of paper, the, that all that, I've heard those stories from that time from that team as well. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I, I know there's more, so I would like to hear yeah. some of that stuff. And so it, I was thinking it seems that. like if you sat down with Daryl. And because of what we all know he like battled, yeah. his own personal demons, yeah. there's so much I guarantee you that we don't know about that you like. Oh, you did. What? No what? doubt. And I bet you, like, he's a guy that you would sit How'd down you with. Play? And he's very, yeah, yeah, seriously. He's very easy to talk to, you yeah. feel like. Like, he's very, like, he's open. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, it's not even like asking him deep stuff. Like, I bet you'd be entertaining. Like, it'd be fun. Like, he's mm-hmm. one of those loose, whatever. So, that All that's right. where I was going. And I'll change my answer to Doc LSD. Doc LSD. I need to get to the bottom of it if he actually did. If he was tripping on acid during the no hitter, because I'd like to talk, I'd like to wait. I, let me, I, I'll give you my second one too. This one, so you went all the way back. I went kind of back before us, and then I'll give you one from like our time too. Mike Napoli. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to hear some stories there. I've I, heard I know a some stories. Ton. Yeah, yeah. So that, he seems like I, I've heard nothing but good things. Like outside of what, like. Party at Napoli is like that was a shirt, like that was a thing. Everybody yeah. goes party at Napoli. That was a, that was a deal when he was with the Indians. Yeah. But everybody that I've played with, Guardians. played with him. Guardians, sorry, was the Indians. Don't everybody that I've played, to me. everybody that I've played with, that played with him, is like he is the best teammate you have ever played with. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, I, those so, are my favorite. That that would be. I like that one. That, that'd be the two names out there. Oh, yeah. If I could add one more, if we're gonna do honorable mention, Manny Ramirez. Just what do you? How? How did you get away? Because the old clip surfaced of him. With one out, he climbs the wall, high fives the fan, and then throws it back into mm-hmm. play. And it's just like you got—you just didn't. Or when he went in the scoreboard. Yeah. That no, that's the other best him. part. <laughs> but he literally high fived the fan, climbing the wall, and it was like, all right, I'll throw this thing back in. Yeah. And then he has the obviously the incredible play where he decides to be a cutoff man and dives for a ball. I just wanted to know how he got away with it all. Like yeah. he, for I different guess, reasons, I can name so many guys. Me too. Me too. But those are. Off the top of my head, those are the two that yeah. like, they stick out for me. Manny being right. Manny became Lloyd being Lloyd at the old Menard Field. There you go. Very quickly. <laughs> there you go. All right, from the doc. I got one more. For, uh, yeah, you want to go yeah, from the doc? Yeah, let's go alternate. Okay, alternate, alternate. alternate, alternate. I mean, you want to ask the one? <laughs> I like this one. You want it? Yeah. Mikey and Jay Mitch, not Lloyd. I don't know why. Um, this is from LSU GA18. LSU, yeah, LSU guy. LSU GA18. Mikey and Jay Mitch, why did y'all decide to hang up the cleats? Well, you know. <laughs> Sometimes in this crazy thing called life, right? You are you don't have decisions sometimes. Like the decision that you want to make is not the decision that is made for you by default. You and see this thing right here? Yeah, it just stopped ringing. It didn't it it didn't ring the way it used to ring. It just stopped ringing that. So, <laughs> so when it, so it no it rang, I wasn't no longer being like, "Oh, hey, yeah." It was it was more, hey, yeah, I'm I'm sending out phone mess text messages and phone calls, and I am not getting any. Yeah, I'm the one trying to do it, and I'm not getting any phone calls. Now my phone was ringing, but on the other end of it was not what you wanted to hear. Yes, or yeah. teams that it wasn't teams. It was just my friends. Yeah. It was, there you so, go. Hey, where are you gonna play this year? I don't know. I don't think I'm playing. It doesn't look well, like I'm going to be playing. My, you see the way my incoming calls is set up. Yeah, you see the way my phone is set up. It must be. They must have the wrong number, I think. I don't know. But but only I've been having that number. To answer your question, forever. to answer your question, I didn't hang them up by well, choice. By choice. Um, I won't deal with the Nets, Yanks. No, I didn't. They reneged on it. That was the issue. No. The game will tell you when it's time. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I it wasn't our, my decision. It wasn't Jared's decision. We just didn't get the opportunities that we had wanted. And at this point in our life, unfortunately, at 32, you're old, too old for baseball, which is weird to me because not all 32-year-olds are built the same. Um, you know, had, we had good years, the years that we were before, you know, the, the before hanging them up. And, uh, you know, at that point I had to realize, okay, I have, a, I have to create a life outside of baseball. And yeah. am I going to keep hanging on? And I've always told myself that 
I wasn't going to play baseball just to play baseball. I love or, baseball. Or just everything. to run away from real life. Right. Or just, yeah, or to say, hey, I'm going to play baseball just because I don't want to go out and do the real life. I'm not, I wasn't scared of the real world. I wasn't scared of, like, what's going to happen. But I was going to play baseball as long as I had the opportunity to get to the highest level right. and have opportunity to make it to the big leagues. And Amen. whenever I didn't get that opportunity, that was my time of saying, you know what, it's time to move on. Time to, I had a great life, had a great career, a great baseball life. Enjoyed every minute You're of You're at the bar life. all the time. Huh? That guy that worked in Detroit. And he's like, oh, we see him here all the time. Like, I've literally never been here. Literally never been here. I don't know what you're talking about. It must be somebody else. <laughs> Get you fired. The, you league, the league caught fire. They knew about it. They, we don't want him in our bars. <laughs> and I just got one via text messages from my boy Mark. LSU minus 720 on the run line this weekend for the for, for mm. Friday night. What's the over-under? That's what I was That's what at. they were trying to predict in the chat. They had it at 12, 12 and a half. On the first game? I think it would be under. With the weather... Depending on, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. First game. Yeah, I'll go under. I'll go under. Um, I'm not touching 720. I mean, no. that's half the bankroll. That's, that's, that's even for you. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> um, which, which they need to figure out how to tease, unless you had to tease yeah. baseball. All right, we got any more? Yes, uh, we have another one coming in. And it is. Oh, in the same vein, over under for Matt, over under homers on Friday night. And then there was a dovetail off of that of how many we how many home runs from Dylan Cruz in game one. Over under homers Friday night, two and a half. Think you said uh, two and a half? Mm-hmm. First time out of the shoot, two and a hook. I like that number. Um he's talking about the wind, crosswind. And I would go under. Honestly. I'll tell you what, yeah. I'll tell you what. If you're a righty and you can hit that right center field jet stream. Balls take off, mm-hmm. so uh, two and a half is a good number. I'd go, I'd go under. I take the under, and I'd probably take the under on the total. But I, I, honest, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if we got over. Yeah. Do you think there's any merit to LSU switching up the the pitching that they've seen to going into what is it, Western Michigan or Central Michigan? Jay's always cooking, man. So but that's what I'm saying. But from going to such elite arms, to, there's obviously like a little bit of a drop off. Stuff he wants to see, you know. Well, no, I'm not talking about the coaches. I'm talking about the players being able to adjust from seeing. Not, they're not going to see Skeens, 99, and the everybody that's coming out the bullpen at 96. As 98. long as they're over the hitting speed, which I suspect they will. It's be. Western Michigan. Yeah, Western be Michigan. Fine. Yeah, because um, well, there are some players that say they have trouble hitting. I don't want to say do. bad pitching, under, but that's adjusting what I said, under the hitting yeah, speed. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, but I think that's a good. It's a good test. It's like, hey, listen, like you're gonna see all types and forms of pitchers, and you have to be able to adjust with what's going. On. You can't just say, oh, we're gonna be only hit 98 miles an hour. Like, no, no, no. If the guy's throwing 82, you gotta be able to, to figure out how to adjust that. And I think that they'd be fine with that. I don't think that there's gonna be any issue with that. Yeah. Um, One more right. here. He's asked it twice. So LS, that's just all he put in the chat. Ask him and him. Best pitcher on the sta- on the staff after ski. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a good that's question. I think that. Uh, that could literally be a five-man race this year. I've said I've said this. I think the best year, and I said this could happen. He could even have a better year than Skeens. I'm very high on Ty Floyd, like extremely high on him. I think the way he's pitched over the last the last two months of last year, and the fact that he's developed to start pitching, I think West is going to be huge for him. I think he has the ability to have an outstanding year. I don't know if he's going to have the better numbers than Skeens, but I wouldn't if he if he does I wouldn't be surprised. You know I mean I think that he could have be that guy that could have a sub 3 ERA like yeah. that type of guy. Watch out for Thatcher Hurt, man. Him too. Watch out for Thatcher Hurt. I I you know health has been his you know his thing his only year in college ball. He wasn't able to pitch he had a back issue, right? Yes. If he's if he can be healthy, I think I he's going to put up an, like an electric stat line. Yep. And one more from the doc that we got from Twitter. So shout out to everybody that put it in the Twitter. Yep. Shout out to Jackie Boy, get him in the doc. That yep. helps me immensely. Big question. Something that we kind of that I tried to kind of finagle an answer out of him when he came out on Monday. How does Coach Jay Johnson manage extremely high expectations through a 56 game regular season, including the postseason? Don't give me one day at a time either. No, no. I think the, I think the way he manages it is he emb- he embraces it, right? Like he goes and tells the guys, "Hey, this is what." Our Isn't, expectation is not outside of the field. It doesn't matter what people's expectations of us are. Our expectations are this. So 
you only thing that you need to worry about is living up to the expectations that you set for yourself and that is Omaha, right? That is a national championship. So I think he embraces that. He allows the team to understand what the ultimate goal is. But at the end of the day, he's got to explain to them, like, listen, it's a long season. There's a lot of things that are going to happen to the course of the year. You're not going to go undefeated. You're not going to win every game. But how you deal with that adversity and how you deal with some of those losses is going to tell you a lot about how good we're going to be. And I think that's how he manages it. You have to embrace it. You have to accept the expectations. And you have to take those expectations and use that, like I told, we talked to JT, as motivation um, moving forward. Say, hey, listen, these are our expectations. We're going to go out there and prove it because we know we're going to get everybody's best shot. Yeah. Um, for me, I think without basically saying, like, oh, you're almighty, you're the best ever, you can't be any worse, I don't know how we were able to be so lucky enough to have you, I think being able to realistically speak about holding a national championship trophy at the end of the year and letting these guys know day in and day out just how good and how talented they are and if they can play together what the ceiling is is how you in my mind manage the thought process of going too far ahead and not being able to take care of situations so when you say don't talk about take it day by day the way you talk about it is is when western michigan shows up you make sure they leave here with three losses because that's what's expected of you. Because that's what you are. That's how good you are. This is what you should be doing. But don't disrespect but them. Don't, dis don't yeah. disrespect them by sh not showing up, by making three errors, by not being locked in with a runner on second base, by not getting the guy in with a runner on third base. That's that's how you manage those thought pro the thought process of getting too far ahead and not understanding what the task at hand is. Yep, I love that. Is that it? Now we have one more on the social, and it is. Let me get to the queue. My bad. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. This is obviously something that's been maybe talked about a little bit. Um, I have one more after this also. Do you think small ball sack bunts and moving players is dead? Because yes. I'm a big <laughs> believer in. <laughs> I mean, we talked about your, who was your former coach, Jay Mitch, that always wanted you to steal. I'm a big proponent of stealing bags, but it's not as That's easy Coleman, as it baby. used to be. That's Coleman. Um, so I, I think it's, I don't want to say it's dead, but it's on life support. I don't yeah. think that it's going to come back. You're not going to see it from this LSU offense. No, but I think that there's a time and place in the situations, very small situations that it does make sense. And I think yeah. you will see some of that. But the sack bunt in the third inning, with a guy on first base to give him a second base, I don't think you're going to see that anymore, right? What, what, what about I say? Where I think baseball is right now, even college baseball is, is the best teams, when need be, can play small ball, but you're not going to see it encouraged and pushed, like you said, throughout the third and the fifth and the sixth inning. But if we get to the eighth and we need to get this runner over, I think the best teams can execute it now, at, at, at those times. With that said... The question had sack bunts and moving players. M move, uh, moving players isn't done just with a sack bunt. Right. Right? It's done with understanding the situations. Hitting behind runners. Exactly. Fly balls right? when you like need to. Fly balls get guys over. Ground balls on the opposite to the opposite field get guys over. Right? Those aren't bunts. That's still giving an opportunity to the hitter and saying, hey, listen, you got, depending on who you are, right? Dylan Cruz, drive the ball. Tommy White, drive the ball. You do, you guys do that. But if you're struggling or you have a guy on the on the mound who's kind of having a good day, and you have you don't want to put the bunt sign on, you say, okay, you get two strikes. You have the ability to say these two are yours. The third one's ours. So basically, that means, hey, if you're gonna go and drive this thing and get this guy over and do what you gotta do, do it early on. Do it with these first two strikes. If you not, if you don't. The most important part of this at bat is getting that guy from second base to third base with less than two outs. Like, Situation like, hitting. Like, yeah, Situation yeah, like moving a player. Like I can guarantee you right now, if you get Dylan Cruz up this year with a man on second base and nobody out, in his mind, he's moving the player. But in his, his mind, how he's going to move the player is I want to hit an absolute seed off the right center wall. Right. That's him trying to move the player right. because he knows – that is the type of talent and the type of ability that he has. He'd be selling himself short if he's just trying to hit a ball, a ground ball to second base. That's not what you're there for. And now the beauty no. of it is when you have a lefty, right? And let's say it's let's say it's Joe Bear, who had 18 home runs, who has the ability to hit the ball at the ballpark any swing. 
you get at second base, and let's say Jobert's not feeling very good, right? He hasn't really been swinging it that great. He doesn't feel confident. Maybe he's having a bad day. All right. Hey, no bunt. You get on the base. Just, just yank the ball. Just hit me a ground ball to second base. And sometimes I've seen it with lefties. You can speak to it as, as a lefty, right? Some lefties I've seen like, hey, when they get in that situation, all they're trying to do is just hit that ground ball to second base. They end up having their best swing of the day or they end up getting themselves back into it because they weren't trying to do too much. They're just trying to do something simple. Now, as a righty hit to right to, to a second base, a little different, you know, because you have to let it. But as a lefty, sometimes, especially lower levels, you can just, you know, Attack. you don't have to hit hard, you know. So that that's also a way of moving guys. I mean, yeah. you're a lefty. You no, can, yeah, 100%. You can 100%. That. I, but like you said, moving, move, just moving players isn't necessarily a small giving thing. yourself up. Right. As much as a sack bun or yep. the, the thought process of small ball is. Yep. It's knowing how to go about those things. And I think in a way, yeah, it's on life support. But I think when need be, the best teams can do it. They yep. can execute it. Shout out Chris McGee. Shout out Chris McGee and Mike what Hollander. A, yeah. And uh, Tyler Hanover. Yeah. All big bunners. Tyler Hanover broke Mike Hollander's record for most sack bunts. That's that something you want. You got it. Well, you got it. All right, last you last one here. You got it. Last one here before the curtain calls. <laughs> yes, it's a great one too. And it said, "Get ready to jog your brains." Fonz Ferrelli, big in the chat. Thank you. I don't know <laughs> who you are, but the Fonz is. Hey, he's in here. Ask him. You gotta be watching right now. He's gotta be. He's in it. Wow. Wow. So for the podcast, ask him and him. If someone if someone asks you what is your favorite memory from your time in baseball, what's the first thing that pops into your brain? You wanna go first? No, that wouldn't be the first thing that popped in your brain. What, what's the first thing you thought of? First thing I thought of was when we won the national cha- It wasn't the hit. It wasn't when we won the national championship. The first thing that we did, we're all celebrating. The first thing that I did was I. they had the newspaper thing, like the headlines. And me and Anthony jumped on the tarp. And we were like screaming with the headlines, like on tarp in front of the fans. And I was like, that to me was like the coolest thing. No pictures? I mean, I couldn't find that picture of that one. Favorite memory? And there's a couple that popped in my head, but like if you said first, like that was the first. I don't know why that one came into my head first. And maybe if you asked me this two weeks, it'd be something different. It'd be something different. Yeah, I mean, so when that when I read that question, for me, like the thought process of College War Series comes to my mind. Um... I guess my favorite memory would probably be from that time would be giving Nick Pontiff a hug as he came on and I came off when we were in the ninth inning, I think, of that game three. 11-5? Yeah. And it was just like, it, was, it wasn't it was a like a let your hair down relief. Like, you obviously still got to get those last three outs, but... It felt way different than it did in the first. Yeah, it was, it was, one of, it was the feeling of like... Everything that we tried and we talked about and we wanted to do this year, we just did it. Mm-hmm. Like, it all came together at that spot if we could get these last three outs. And it was like, wow. And you were on the bench while getting to watch on the bench. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The hug there. of that part of knowing, like, I'm going out of the game. I won't play in college anymore. And it's like, it's over. But with three outs, it's over the way we, we drew it up. And it was like, oh, shit. Like, that's, this is about to be a reality. That was the coolest thing for And me. we did it together. And we yeah. partied hard together after. Yeah. It was awesome. That's the best thing. Because, yeah. like, everything, every time we did something, we all celebrated together. And I think that was really cool. Yeah. Great. Ask Mikey and Mitch. Second, ask Mikey and Mitch. That's great. Fire. So it happens when you start promoting it. That's what I'm saying. The power yeah. of social is a That's very it. strong thing. Um, I guess I have one. I had the game ending catch against the Vans when we convinced the entire student section to stay that didn't even go to our school. And then they, like, stayed over the left field wall and we all dogpiled into like the left field bleachers we went over the wall with them but that was nice to be the banjo for number one team in the state no oh, big deal yeah, yeah. Big and deal. my grandson hammered two, two good memories <laughs> 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 to be the number five a team in the state there you <laughs> go no big deal after prom no big deal no big deal um <laughs> great show drunk all the today time. boys let's, yeah. let's let's cap this thing off with the curtain call curtain calls brought to you by our friends there our shared partners and 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 me and me okay. and me okay um, all right, let's go through the curtain call. So um, your curtain call, Lloyd, do you have one in there? I do. And while it may be a curtain call that I don't know how long it'll last, 
but Tiger Woods is back, boys. Tiger Woods is and back. And this is not a major. This is Tiger feeling himself going out there. I think he's there. feeling good, man. I think he's. I think this year is going to be better than last year for him. He's going to play in more tournaments because he's probably a little stronger. That's the, he said all of the things that he would expect Tiger to say. Yeah. The only thing that was a little unnerving, I guess, is he's trying to – he says, and he said this since day one, ever since he set foot as being a professional golfer where he said – I wouldn't set. I wouldn't align myself in a tournament if I don't think I can win. Yep. There's like the famous interview he has with Paul Azinger, I believe, where Paul's like, "You'll learn." When he tells like, "What do you think you're gonna do in your first career start?" He's like, I, "I I intend to win." And he's like, "It's not that easy out here." He's like, "I intend to win," and Paul's like, "Oh, you'll learn." And he had to go back and watch it together. But Tiger is still giving you that same sentiment at what 46 years old, mm-hmm. where he said, "I wouldn't be at the Genesis if I didn't right. think I could win." But he also dovetailed it and like kind of ended it with, this is also something I'm going to have to battle mentally of when do I know, like I have to overcome the hurdle of me thinking I can win every tournament I, I, I right, sign up but, for. But that's something that keeps him going. Winning a tournament, having the mindset of winning it is one thing, right? Going into the tournament, he always has to believe that because at the end of the day, if his, if his body holds up, he always has a chance to win. Well, he's been built around that too. Yeah. Like that's, you know, that's why he's done it for so long. And I think because- his whole thing is I got I to gotta convince, I got to... I almost convinced myself. Or oh, it's the adjustment of like, hey, my body may not hold up. But my mind. But my mind's always going to be there. So if my bo- if I can't physically do that, I got to be able to understand that and say, okay, maybe. Well, recognize it too. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so like maybe pull out or do something, you know what I mean, in the tournament. Well, that's so. what he, and I, I feel like he doesn't want to have to do that. Right, anymore. I know. That, because I know. it's, it becomes a sideshow of Tiger spectacle. Well, and maybe, and maybe, and maybe having like, he plays in a tournament and maybe he takes two weeks off and he plays in another tournament and he takes instead of saying, "Hey, I know I can win this tournament mentally, but physically, I don't know if I'll, I need I need more time to recover." So and I'm just pumped he's back. Yeah, me too. And the bigger, um, I guess, curtain call to all this is he's ramping up for Augusta. That's yep. the only thing that all signs point to him walking down the fairway yep. on 18 again. No doubt. And so there's no better place in sports than Sunday, Tiger in the blood red, God. and he's in contention. You cannot find a more enthralling moment. And that's in one. That's one of the majors. I think that he's always going to be able to contend for. That's the mind. Mm-hmm. He knows that course like his left hand and yep. his right hand. I love that, and probably really. a lot of left and right hands. Pro- <laughs> um, okay, your curtain call, Jay. Uh, my curtain call would be to everyone and anyone who absolutely flamed Juju Smith Schuster for the ridiculous <laughs> Valentine's Day tweet he put out there. If you didn't see it, uh, we got it. Yeah, we got it. We'll put it up really quick. So I don't know. If you don't know who this is, by the way, it's James Bradbury, the guy that got called for holding on Juju at the end of the game. And this is what Juju decided to tweet on Valentine's Day. So I don't know it exactly right now, but I'm pretty sure Juju did pretty much of nothing. In the Super Bowl, he had seven catches, but like all underneath, and when he was when they got the hold, yeah, right. He wasn't very memorable. I watched no. every play. Right, I saw the seven catches. Yeah, they weren't very seven memorable. for like fifty-seven yards. Like wasn't very memorable. Yeah, right. He did not have a great season, and to me, like the whole thought process of that he went through the last year or so of thinking it was a good idea to dance on every team's fifty-yard line is probably what ended up him out of Pittsburgh, which is now probably how he got here, which is probably why he probably won't be there again next year, right? Is not understanding like, hey, bro, have a little more feel, Mm -hmm. have a little more class, play the game, respect your opponent, and move on. You won, take your dub, move on. Yep. So my curtain call is to everyone who wore his ass out about how ridiculous ridiculous that tweet was because it was stupid. I love that. I'm on that. I'm on that. I'm on that. Um, my current call is to the Kelsey contingency family. Yeah. Right. Like obviously the brothers played against each other. Jason Kelsey is going to be a hall of fame center. Um, Travis Kelsey is going to go down as like probably the greatest tight end of all time when it's all said and done, at least numbers wise. And, you know, Travis just won a second Super Bowl. And, you know, they obviously are extremely close. They do a podcast together. They do everything together. It's awesome, too. It's great. And I'm very, uh, you know, the way that their mom went through the whole thing and the way that they showed their appreciation and love for the mom and their family, like, uh, you know, I, I respect that. And I think that was awesome. And I think that's, you know, they lo- like they're grown-ass men and they're, like, tearing up and still love their family and love their mom. And it's just, 
That's cool. I have a bone to pick with not not the Kelsey family, but with the NFL. Do you not think that they went total PR by going mom and not dad by having we're going to have women involved in sports? She sat next to Roger Goodell for like half Where of was the, the game. Dad? That's what I'm saying. The dad's like in the family. He's not like a. I know because they say we gotta go find my parents. We gotta find my parents. Like yeah. So the, the fa- father Kelsey is in the picture, but I think the NFL did a PR stunt where you have. Did you not see our outfit? Yeah, I think yeah, split jersey. I think the I think the mom shoes. I don't think that's the NFL. I think that's literally like. I think the mom's a little bit more relatable to yeah. everybody. Well, I think it's obviously they want to get women in sports, and they have a female official. And this. Well, it's is hard for avenue. me to believe too that the NFL said when the game was over, "Hey, mom, come on the field, dad, chill." Yeah. Right. But that, so yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't but I don't, I don't know if that's what. It regardless, was. I, well, think I mean, Roger had. Guy Roger. Oh, then let me. Yeah, Roger had Demar Hamlin, and then he had white woman here, and it's like, look how inclusive the NFL is. Look at how cool Roger. I mean, is. that's not. Yeah, really I think that's that. just the storyline just played itself out. Right. It wasn't in the script, Lloyd. Like it wasn't. I think that they obviously they took advantage that. of an opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's, like yeah. I don't think that Nothing it was. That. I don't think it was. I think it's that business. the I think a mother's love for the son was the story, right? Like I think it's two sons. That's what I mean. But for a son, like for their sons, right? Like I think that's you know everybody talks about a mother's love for their son, a mother's love for their son. Like I think that's the storyline that they were taking, and I think that's a little bit more relatable to everybody in the world. As opposed to the dad and the son, like of course, like they showed Mahomes and his dad. You know, what I mean, like they had some moments too, but the Kelsey's mom and the sons, I think they hit a little harder. So, shout out to that because I think that was awesome. Curtain call of that. Um, great show today. We back went Friday. overtime. We went overtime without even trying. You love when we do that. Uh, we will be back live in studio this Friday, one to three p.m., one to three ish, and uh, we will preview. After this opening day workout for these. Opening day will preview your little BPN. Hey, well, you can actually go in the mornings now. For now. For now. <laughs> uh, we'll preview the game. <laughs> God damn it. Get a little uh, batting practice before the batting practice. And uh, we're going to preview the, the Western Kentucky, Western Michigan. Western Michigan, sorry. Western Michigan, yeah. Hilltoppers are tough. Uh, yeah. Uh, preview the series, preview what we want to see, and uh, you know, have some more baseball talk. It's baseball season, baby. It's here. It's here. Maybe keep an eye on the old TikTok. For Mike Duff. Yeah, maybe maybe so. We're gonna start. We're starting to grow. To get we're this man do, out of his comfort zone. We're starting to do some things. Um, all right, we love you. We appreciate you. If you like watching our show and you like listening to us, please like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Tell a friend about it. Share it with your friends. Um, if you don't like watching us and you like listening to us, we're on anywhere you get your podcasts. And uh, we're again Mondays and Wednesdays from six to eight p.m. and Fridays from one to three in the studio. We appreciate your support. We appreciate you following us and uh, look forward to growing with you. Yeah, just so you know, Monday, Jay Johnson Monday. Wednesday, Jay Johnson Mondays. Ask him And I want to apologize a little bit because, you know, we said Jay Johnson Mondays. We start, we were going to start next Monday. That was the original start date when the season started, or yeah, next Monday, following up the series. We started a couple weeks early because Jay was available. The weekend rain pushed their schedule back. They had a scrimmage on Monday. So I apologize. I wasn't trying to bamboozle you, but – uh, Jay Johnson Monday. We'll be back next Monday. Ask Mikey Mitch on Wednesdays. We'll continue to promote that. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all on Friday. Peace. Peace. See ya. See ya. And you know. And you know what, Jared? <laughs>